I'm looking up by two minutes. Okay. I'm looking up by two minutes. Welcome everyone to the August 28th planning board meeting. Uh, there's some interesting things on the agenda and I'll talk a little slow so our member can <laughs> sit. Uh, 7.30, continued public hearing, 5060 West Main Street. The uh, project liaison is Mr. DeYoung, so I'll turn it over to you. Very good, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Jennifer, the first thing is, do we need to open up the uh, public hearing? Um, for the public hearing, yeah. Wait, do you have a vote on it, or we No. Can? All right. Uh, so we were gonna pick up where we left off. Um, we will do that with the site plan review, but before I do so, uh, since the last time they were here in July 24th, I believe, um, there's been a meeting on August 2nd uh, with Jennifer and some members. Yes. So um, myself, Don McAdam, um, Phil from Beta, and the applicant and their consultants met um, at the temporary town hall offices at 80 South Street on August 2nd to discuss, you know, Beta's comments and Primarily, this the issue of the stormwater and the basin, and why it's not functioning the way it should be functioning, and how to correct that problem before we add additional stormwater to the basin. So I thought it was a pretty productive meeting, um, and they were going to go back and, and look at what they could do and, and come back with some plans. I don't believe we've received anything. Well, I know we haven't received anything yet, so I'm not sure where they stand with that. So you may want to ask the applicant where that stands. Okay. Um, Wayne, Gary, Joe, thanks for coming tonight, guys. Uh, I will give you the floor here initially if you have any thoughts or feedback from that um, meeting with Jennifer and the other members. Uh, and then what we'll do is we'll kind of, again, get in the site plan review and kind of go down that process as we started the last time. So, uh, Thank Wayne, you, if you have the floor. Uh, for the record, my name is Wayne Davies, and uh, I represent Golden Pond in this action. Uh, we just want to let you know that uh, Mr. Markadon has been in, in touch with Beta for the past uh, few weeks and has, from our perspective, been making progress in, in, out, in the outstanding issues. Um, there still uh, is uh, uh, or are a few things that need to be resolved, and uh, Mr. Markadon, uh, uh, again, is, is working on that. Um, with respect to uh, a comment on page two of the planner's um, uh, summary, um, we, Golden Pond has also had uh, communications with the fire department and uh, as you'll recall uh, during phase two they had, uh, the fire department had requested uh, that access between the two buildings uh, be preserved. Um, apparently the fire department is now uh, reconsidering that requirement uh, which now opens up uh, the possibility for um, uh, additional landscaping and other um, uh, changes to uh, the area between the two buildings. And again, we, Golden Pond is working on uh, a modification of the plan that would um, uh, recognize the, the fire department's uh, actions uh, earlier this month. Uh, so uh, I anticipate that a, a, a plan with uh, some modifications uh, will follow. Um, in addition, that, that would affect the lighting, uh, the revised lighting plan and, and the landscaping plan. So um, those are still uh, in progress. <coughs> uh, I don't have anything really further to add at this time. Um, I think just to move the meeting along, if we can address uh, your concerns and, and the outline. Yeah, I mean, I think uh, I'll see if there's any other questions from members of the board, but the thought would be to kind of go through the existing items in the outline. Uh, at the last meeting, uh, Phil from Beta had identified in his outline some things that were outstanding. Uh, it sounds like Joe's working on that with, with Phil, and maybe at the next time that we get together, there'll be an opportunity to kind of update that in addition to the information about the fire department discussion and any type of changes to lighting, landscaping, and, and other things. It'd be great to kind of blend it all in if you kind of check the box and get it all done at once. Great, if not, we'll continue to iterate, but I'd love to be able to consolidate and kind of choo -choo -choo move through. Okay. Right. Anything else, uh, <coughs> Mr. Durso? For the sake of consolidation, and uh, for the neighbors watching at home that asked me to ask this question specifically, um, 
the stormwater basin that you mentioned, there's been progress and that that's still yet to be determined? It sounds like that's being worked on. Is that correct? Yeah, I mean, keep in mind that the, the CONCOM has concurrent uh, jurisdiction in this matter and, and Mr. Marcadant is, is uh, discussing you know, that with the CONCOM also and, and uh, we're making progress but uh, um, an agreement with CONCOM has not yet been, been reached. Is it a me mechanical issue or is it a... Uh, um, Mr. Marcon, do you want to reply to that? Quite frankly, we're not really sure. We have done soil testing uh, in and around the area to corroborate testing from uh, 2009 and 2012 and we obtained similar, similar results to that testing down in the basin area adjacent to the basin uh, westerly of that. So now we're trying to establish um, if we don't have groundwater influence, where are all the flows coming from? And that's the issue that we have been endeavoring to solve. We reached out to Congress Construction who did the site work for phase two and have received some information from them. I was away, unfortunately, for a good chunk of time and just haven't been able to assimilate all that information. So the hope is in the next few days, take all that information and come up with a solution for uh, the stormwater problem. Thank you. <coughs> Thank you, friend. I, I think just to piggyback on that, correct me, is there a current issue that's being resolved? And then once that's done, does phase three, then is that automatically taken care of because you've addressed it at this point, phase two, yeah, or is I, it another thing? I, I, I think that uh, the, the plan is to address all outstanding issues with the CONCOM at this time. Phase two, and current, and effect. I think we could let Phil speak, I don't know if you want to speak to what you perceive as the issue, too, from our, for our perspective, from the town's perspective. I, I'd love to. Phil, <coughs> please. Um, just for the record, Phil Paradis with Beta Group. We've been uh, assisting um, <coughs> in the review of this project. Um, the there there's been a little bit of a mystery in terms of uh, what's happening with the stormwater. We visited the site on, on several occasions and have n have observed standing water in the the rear basin. Um, some sometimes as high as the outlet invert, and then there's there seems to be some flow, continuous flow going into it. Um, there was, uh, I think, uh, one of the test results that we received uh, showed that the, the groundwater was higher uh, than uh, whatever 2009. Um, one of the other one of the other test pits that didn't go low enough, um, so so we didn't have a whole lot of data to figure out what was going on. That's when we we discussed this issue uh, at our August 2nd meeting, and um, there was going to be some investigation. So we haven't heard anything back from that at this point. So, so it's kind of in a in a work stage right now, phase from to your perspective, and then being able to communicate back to, to Phil and from correct. It's our anticipation in the next few days we'll develop a plan. scenario that handles all our issues and then get with Beta to make sure we're on the same page. We just simply haven't had the time, given the, t the fact that I was away. Sounds like it's a relatively important issue in order to be able to kind of clear up and move forward. My layman's take on it. Any other questions? Thank um, you. Planning board members. <coughs> All right, if there are none, uh, I would direct folks to look at the site plan review and the hearing outline uh, that we uh, introduced at the last meeting. I think, if I'm not mistaken, Jennifer, we got through section six. Uh, I don't think there were any additions by the planning board members or the public. So I would then move to item number seven, which looks at a detailed discussion on, we'll start with the traffic, but there's a, a, about eight different items under the discussion topic. So traffic. As you know, uh, we went through a rigorous review back in uh, 2012 on the project. But we did ask Ron Mueller, uh, traffic engineer, to review the implications of the change with phase three. And that letter dated uh, May 2nd was included in the submission package. Um, I believe Ron's summary on uh, page two is the meat of it. Um, 
the 54 bed addition would generate 220 vehicle trips per day, uh, 10 trips peak AM, 16 yeah. trips peak PM. Um, the uh, assumption would be that 60% would travel west towards 495 and 40% easterly. And in his opinion, and I quote somewhere in the bottom of that last paragraph, these increases are negligible, will not have an effect on the traffic flow along West Main Street. Yeah. We feel we have safe uh, flow, safe uh, pedestrian access throughout the site given the walkways and safe vehicle access once we get through the construction era phase of the project. So we do not feel that traffic will, will pose an issue for the yeah, phase exactly. three. And, and I didn't see any other comments from Beta uh, regarding the traffic fill other than the review that's essentially what Joe just quoted right yeah, now. Beta concurs with so <clears throat> I think we're good on the traffic. Any other comments from the planning board members? Public. <coughs> public comments. Thank you, Jennifer. <laughs> Any verbal from the public comment on the traffic? Close out traffic. Please. <coughs> Building design? Building design. Um, I think you have the uh, We've got uh, plans. Um, I, I, I'm, it is what it is. Uh, do you have any questions on it? That was going to be my question out to the, the members here. Any issues or questions on the design? I will just say that the design review board did review the building design and had no comments, no changes, no recommendations. So my assumption here is that they're in a good place with it? Yes, they were. Planning board members. <coughs> there was a comment in our packet. Uh, there was no street level view design presented, and I hadn't seen it. If that's uh, something that should be considered, that's because the building's in the back. Phase two blocks the view from the street. You're not going to see it from the street, right? So essentially, uh, is that an issue? Was did Phil ask? Someone asked that question. I thought it was from Beta. Uh, because it can be seen from Elm Street, so it's... I'm not sure if that was the intent of the question. I don't see it in front of me right now. Glasses. Well, I, I, I think the intent is to, is to come as close as possible to the existing phase two. Um, yeah. The illustrations that you have been pro provided are clear as what the building is going to look like. Right. Wasn't the look and feel similar to, to phase two? Yes. The, the building design layout? Mm -hmm. uh, so I don't know if that, mm -hmm. I don't know, Frank, if there's going to be anything that's going to be. Uh, it's just a question I had saw, but I hadn't, it wasn't an answer for it. I don't see it right now. So it's, mm -hmm. it looks like they've done a good job of phase two and then the uh, expansion of phase two. So I'm sure it will fit. I mean, I think the thought would have been that it flows pretty seamlessly into what was already built in phase two. And so there shouldn't be no, significant difference <coughs> in terms of what it looks like. That's correct. That's my sense. Amy, please. So my only comment, we looked at this at design review already too, but I drove by there again today and the addition seems like it's really going to be nestled in there um, so that the new windows will be facing the existing building. Uh, like are there concerns for privacy that residents in the new phase three, it looked like they'd almost be looking into the windows of the residents in phase two. But I presume you have provisions for privacy and. I think I think uh, I'm not sure where that where that falls in design review yeah. criteria, but um, I can assure you that they'll have shades. Okay. <laughs> All right. Anything else? Any other comments on the design piece? All right. Let's close out building design, Jennifer. Open. Uh, yeah, unless there's any other additional comments on the stormwater piece, <coughs> do we want No, I, I think that should to be continued. I tend to agree with you. Any other comments from planning board members of the public? All right, TBD. Parking lot design. Uh, there's, there's not going to be uh, any significant changes to the parking lot from phase two and the planning board <coughs> did did approve that parking lot design. Um, I think I made comments in the summary uh, to that effect. Yeah. Let's see here. And
and then the snow removal. There are currently two locations for temporary snow storage uh, based on the 2012 review and approval. There is one area down in here that occupies about four spaces, four parking spaces in this location here, and then another up three or four spaces here, and then a gravel area adjacent to the parking lot in here for temporary snow storage. And that has seemed to uh, function effectively since 2012. How often does that get used, those two spaces, those two areas? The four, the four and the two. In the winter time? Depends on how heavy the snows are. And a couple times a year, once a year? Yeah, a couple times a year. Most. Just and then obviously anything that overwhelms those two areas is removed from the site. Yeah. <coughs> Questions? <coughs> yeah. Um, so we're not proposing any additional parking. This is just the the parking that was there from phase two. Yeah, that the so uh, project was permitted. The spaces were uh, provided and constructed in the construction era, 2013. Mm -hmm. So all we need for infrastructure needs are currently in place. And, and just let me add that there, Golden Pond is actually providing 14 more spaces than they're required to under the zoning bylaw. Mm -hmm. So there's an excess of 14 spaces. Once we go. Yeah, once phase three is built, mm -hmm. including phase three. With the additional 54 beds, how many permanent cars? Are there permanent cars that would be associated with that, that would be on, now on premise as a result of that? My question makes sense? <coughs> That's hard to, t hard to tell. It's on a case-by-case -case basis. But keep in mind, this is an assisted living facility. Um, you yeah, know, a good not, number of the, of the residents don't drive. They're not driving around. Right. Yeah. yeah, I was just more curious than anything if we're adding, you know, five or six more cars or just none. Because to your point, a lot of them aren't driving; they're using the vehicles that are provided. If, if we go by past uh, records of how many residents come there that utilize cars, we're going to have a lot more than what the requirements are, space-wise. Yes. Yeah. Excuse me, Mr. Project Lead. I don't mean to yes, go sir. out of order, but I found a note that uh, from Beta about a photogrammatic analysis of proposed building to analyze spillage onto adjacent properties, which I'm assuming is about light, but uh, that was what my comment was earlier. Uh, it's from the Beta comments from... Yeah. There are, there's a number of... Uh, that's just that's a sec, on this. There's a number of comments from Beta where there's issues still outstanding. My thought would be that when the next meeting when they're after they have those discussions we could address those outstanding issues all at one shot Unless right I, I would be agreeable to that and, and just to set that 7e and 7f that you're that you're discussing so um, We're gonna get I, I would suggest C E and F are you know at a future date TBDs right yeah. Go, go but let, let me let me just also uh, um, remind the board that uh, we are relying upon phase two for lighting and for um, the landscaping and, and all we're doing is providing a supplement uh, for the phase three construction. Yeah. I mean, I'm generally okay with that. Two, mm -hmm. two, one through five, now it's just whatever incremental that you're gonna add to that. Right, so. And, and again, because the, of the conversations with the fire department, um, the chief has, has been a little more liberal in, in his, his requirements and and therefore, some modifications are going to be made. And That's good. We'll get those too. And the chief is right there. So, the <laughs> <laughs> Amy. Well, that was my question: Is is this the part where we're going to review the challenging spot between for the fire access between the, the because parking it is lot a, design? Okay. It is park, part of the parking lot. Uh, yes. But we're going to put that off till the next one. Unless they have some answers now. Um, well, I, 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 maybe the fire chief ought to talk about if, if he has any concerns. Okay. That's put you on the spot, chief. <laughs> There's a little echo back here, so I think I heard what you're Sorry. asking. All right, Amy, you want to just? In our notes for in the memo from the principal planner, it says that there may be a challenging spot between phase two and phase three for access for the fire department in case of emergency. So I guess just wanted to hear more about that. So we reviewed the plans, um, oh, a week or 10 days ago, and um, 
in their designing, there's a couple of pieces that have to happen. They're going to be providing a sweat path analysis that shows the flow of our largest vehicle going through the parking, parking lot. We talked about a few. Uh, we currently access the building on the side that faces Golden Pond. Um, we may, may actually completely change the way we service that building and come in from the new side that they're talking about. So concept-wise, we're talking about um, the extra parking spaces they may be able to yield a couple for me so that we can set up towards the front of the building that and kind of sweep the whole area. And um, that makes it easier for me to, with that access now, which currently I don't think really works anyways, down into the building um, where there's a ramp if you've ever gone in there. Um, so we're just evaluating all that. I haven't seen the finished product, but I think conceptually we talked and had quite a bit of agreement on what the plan would look like. Does that help? Yeah. Uh, anything else on parking lot design or the snow storage for the group? Members of the public, any comments? Seeing none. Jennifer? Very good. Close out D. Uh, e and F, we're going to kind of put those on a TBD slash next meeting basis to address. Is that fair for the group? Yes. Yeah. Mr. Mr. Acting Chair, I guess I would call it. Project <laughs> Manager. <laughs> project Man Mr. Project <laughs> Manager. Um, so we know there's some concerns with the lighting to be worked out. What? So uh, can somebody just speak to F, landscaping and screening? What's the concern there? I don't think we have any concerns. Um, I just think that we have not been able to provide you with um, the, the lighting plan and the landscaping plan um, for the phase three construction. I, I'm, I'm not okay. aware of any concerns. Okay, just need more time. That's all. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? If none, we'll move on to utilities. Upgrades were made to uh, the municipal water system part of the construction era in 2012. Uh, we relocated uh, some fixtures, some hydrants, some gates for our own purposes, but then looped the water at the request of the water superintendent. We have upgraded gas, we have upgraded power, we have a connection uh, to the municipal system through the emergency access to Elm Street. So much of the concern with regard to sufficient utility access was handled in 2012. We'll continue to uh, send our sanitary out to Elm Street from the new building. So we don't anticipate any changes to the, the utilities that were upgraded a few years ago. Okay. Thank you, Cliff? So that we, we had in our packet handed to us a, 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 a discussion of possibly going from uh, what, what size main is it now um, on for the pressure line that is in front? Is that why you're going to the back for that? No, there was an issue, uh, quite frankly, with the viability of the on-site septic system. Permission was granted by the DPW <coughs> in 09 to make a connection into the municipal system in Elm Street. There, this access way here, out to the uh, to the west side, was the uh, a no-brainer, quite frankly, to make that connection to the municipal municipal system in Elm Street. So now our flow is collected and sent to the municipal system out in here. So we don't, that upgrade was made seven years ago. We don't anticipate a need to change that. Okay, so so I, I thought I read somewhere that we were we were discussing that you might need to put at the, attached to the high pressure uh, flow line that we have. Is that, was, the, was that in the discussion? The force main? Huh? You were referring to the force main? Yeah, the force main. So, and, and there was, no, we, we run through the gravity line in Elm Street. Okay. So is that what, Frank, do you see what I'm so talking about? Yeah, this is item SP4 from Beta. So our force main is shown to be approximately two feet away from the proposed proposed building corner. Oh, yes. I'm sorry. There is some concern that uh, the connection made for phase two with the lodges that runs in a westerly and then northerly direction might be very close to the footing system. Yes. Here for phase three, so that they may be concerned about a conflict with the location of that force main and the actual concrete construction work. So, in that case, the uh, 
uh, force bay would be relocated away from the uh, footing system so that there would be no accidental uh, destruction of that existing force main during the construction era. And then if there was, a, you guys have agreed to, to, to fix that? Right, it's, it's right here on site, it's yeah. right at the location. We certainly don't want to create any issues for ourselves long term. The record keeping at Congress construction is unfortunately a little sparse. So this issue may take care of itself when we actually open up that corner of the building and find that the main is a few feet away from where we thought it was. If it's more westerly, we don't have an issue. Don't have an issue. Okay, I just wanted to bring that up for clarity, okay? Yeah. And it's just for clarity, in our notes it does say approximately is shown to be, so as you, so you when you discover it by doing a construction, we'll, we'll have a better definitive answer and then you'll take. Right, we have included in the latest revision that we're currently working on uh, a provision to show how that would take place. I'm hoping that it doesn't come to be. Mr. Duras, what, what item are you referring to in, in uh, the latest the response, report, SP4, I'm sorry? Beta's response, Article 20, uh, Site Plan Review, SP4. SP4. From, from the July okay, 24th. Thank you. Yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Right. You guys received a response from John Westerling on your letter dated July 17th yet? Have we? Yeah. No, we have not. We put in, our, in discussing issues with the water superintendent, he suggested that we make a formal request for the gallonage that we need for phase three some odd 8,000 gallons per day, yeah. and we're still awaiting word from uh, John Westerling regarding our request. All right, so that was one of the comments I saw. SP3. Yes. That, right, and yeah. Jennifer also identified something. So that, is that a follow-up item on our end, back to John Westerling to be able to provide uh, the I applicant? I think it would be a follow-up item on their end if they want water. <laughs> <laughs> but well, it sounds like uh, the, the, we have, no issue with, not back we have no issue with contacting John and seeing where things stand on his end. Perfect. Um, and to confirm your, your thought right now, you're correct. They have not, we have not, uh, as of the time of Beto's response, heard from the DPW. So. Right. And I don't know, that, that's probably one of the things I want to follow up just to get John Westerling's perspective on a couple of those issues. <coughs> Notes. <clears throat> Any other questions on utilities from members of the planning board or anybody from the public? Well, we have one more. Sorry. Um, for SP6, we have uh, provided details of proposed retaining wall south of the new building uh, expansion. Beta 2 details not included in um, resubmission. Issue remains outstanding. That may be a moot point. That deals with that access area that the chief just mentioned a moment ago. If we rework that area the way we anticipate, <coughs> the need for those walls uh, will not exist with the next design. So it's very likely that that, that wall, that, that item refers to, will go away on the next revision. Would that, would that be um, in, intrusive on the stormwater drain system as well, or no? No, quite frankly, we'll have a less impervious area with the changes that we're proposing. The access way between the two phases will now be limited. So this concrete access drive and apron down here will be reworked as landscape areas, water features, and an area for the residents to congregate yeah. and, uh, and use outside in indoor, indoor space and outdoor space. So quite frankly, I think we'll have a, a better finished product and some of these issues with regard to the wall and impervious zero will actually improve with the revision that we're currently considering. My hope is that on the next revision to be able to submit it back to beta and a lot of these issues that are outstanding should be ideally taken care of. Mm -hmm. Thank you. That might address, hopefully it's going to address a lot of the ones that from the first iteration that are kind of an open item. If they can be you know, addressed at the next iteration then we can kind of move quickly through a lot of those outstanding ones. Okay. Friend, just to follow on question, yeah. if it's okay with you. Please. Uh, Joe, you were, you were saying that area is going to be worked into landscaping. Is it all landscaping or will there still be uh, access for vehicles? 
No access for vehicles. Okay. I'm not sure how much will be impervious, how much will okay. be plant products. It's just too early to tell right now. Thank you. Thank you. I thought you might ask for sidewalks. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's coming. Bite your tongue, because as soon as you open your mouth, be careful, right? Because watch. Uh, very good. Anything else on utilities from anybody? Jennifer? We should well, probably uh, do you want to leave it open? Yeah, until I was going to say, John I, I think that makes sense. I, I think we can kind of keep that one open. <clears throat> So, Fran, before you go on to H, yes. it would be okay to step, take one step, quick step back to F, Ooh. landscaping? Yes. It's a TV not, side, not sidewalks, but <laughs> close. <laughs> um, in our previous discussions for a different project, um, you said you might be receptive to putting a curb along West Main Street where there is no curb now and it's kind of no distinction and, and the, the landscaping is pretty much sand versus uh, you guys, would you guys be willing to? Do that as part of this project? Yes, we're willing to look at it as long as it's a similar okay. to what's on further up the street. Yeah, paved. just, yeah, I, mean, I think we're just looking for some kind of curving, you know, existing bituminous, is that the right word? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Cape Cod berm, yeah, that's all, just to make it look a little nicer and keep the salt off the grass. Thank you. I, I, I know that you guys are coming back with the landscaping plan, but I just wanted to mention it to you now, so okay. could include that if you want. Good call. Um, construction management plan. We included in uh, the submission package um, the attempt uh, to, I guess, tick off the hot button issues that normally um, come up in these sorts of projects. We are a very dense site. We're a large site, but our focus is here on the southerly side. So in the anticipation of concerns about uh, vehicle access, about uh, product delivery, construction supplies, those sorts of things, and then uh, the parking for all the subs, we put together this first go round with this plan in the package. And what we see as perhaps a, a, a um, beneficial um, traffic pattern is to take that westerly entrance, even if it means some degradation to the islands and curving that are there now, and bring our uh, delivery vehicles in that location there. We anticipate that the construction trailer will go in here, materials will be stored in this location here, and there'll be a small stockpile area for soils in this location. So our, all act, our action is down here at that southerly end. Um, as was mentioned before, the principles in Golden Bond also control the parcel next door, number 62. So there is an area in that back lawn available for uh, the parking of vehicles for the subs that work on the site. We have also available the additional spaces associated with phase three that we won't need until we occupy. So we open the doors, there are 25 odd spaces that are associated with phase three. So we feel that although this is going to be a congested area, it will allow us to bring vehicles in, bring the delivery trucks back out, and then stockpile materials through here, and then handle that stubborn issue of where the subs are gonna park. We don't anticipate that they will be along West Main, they will be on the site, and then on the adjacent parcel. And the delivery trucks can actually go yeah, all they the way can around? Yeah, the, they can make the, the route all the way around. The idea was to bring them in here yeah. that it became a congested area. If It's one thing for Chief Slammon to come and spend some time. Those guys, are, in our minds, are going to be here and dropping off and leaving very quickly. So in my, they're a short-term, short-intensity visit. Yeah. So the idea was if we could keep them here, and then it kind of reduces what some of the residents are going to feel about access around the site. Some are very dedicated to their physical exercise. So put it all down in here, allow them to still use this northerly and easterly portion of the site. And is that where most people, if they go to, let's say they walk or whatever, do they tend to do it on the more the easterly portion or the go? They tend to loop the building. Loop the building? Yeah, so the, this one area in here will be a real concern. But the, the path around the pond is good. They can make that connection. They'll it'd be difficult in the, the poor weather months, there's no doubt about it. But they will have the option to utilize 
two thirds of the site. Just that this last leg of the loop will be developed for a while. So it'll be somewhat prohibitive for them to be able to do the loop around when, during the construction? Well, last period. time when we did phase two, yeah. they would go halfway around and then reverse their direction and go back around again. And that was cool. So, yeah, so that, okay. that, that's what has to happen for six months. That's what they'll do. It's not a long term. Any questions on this particular aspect of the construction plan? I, yeah. I just wondered about where do the emergency vehicles go during the construction? So can they did they same do the same path as like the delivery trucks? They can go around. Or yes, we feel that this route will give them the access if they continue to go this way. Okay. That is unchanged. This is the the area where all the activity is. And they won't need to stop there and just be blocking anything. They'll be able to stop up the other side. Yeah, stop the other side. Okay. And then obviously there will be some coordination to get them back out. If they use the easterly entrance, swing around, there'll have to be some coordination to get them back out and, and on their way. Okay. But we hope that that's infrequent. Chief, did, yeah. did any questions or comments from your perspective on that, what Joe just talked about there during the construction period? Not sure if I've seen this plan yet. We did have some dialogue. I'm probably one of my greatest concerns at this point is during the construction period, what the plan will be to maintain our access. Um, our experience in um, phase two and then kind of the most recent small addition in the back is the owners are trying really hard, but it's challenging to keep the flow of the site opening. So they, they did work every time I visited. They worked hard to work on the site. I'm, I'm watching the size of this project. To, it appears to be bigger, so um, I think we've got to keep some ideas open, whether somebody you know, truly polices or manages the site during construction or something like that. So I think as long as we're working together and maintain public safety access, then we'll be okay. Do that. It, Thank you. It, it, thank you, Chief. It seemed like the diagram that Joe pointed out, there's an egress point, they can loop it around, they can come in through the, the, the west side or do the, the loop. Okay, so am I missing anything there? Or? No, no. The idea was that that we create that, continue to create that flow around the building. If they came in the easterly entrance to the construction area, that's still there. This is the part that is going to require some give and take. Yeah. But the idea would be that the work is complete. They've done the call, and if it's simply the, the truck, yeah that is accompanying the ambulance or, or a passenger vehicle, that can make its way back out with some back and forth between the, the contractors and, and the other flow of traffic. Right. But access to- I mean, Worst case scenario, door, they just go back out the- Yeah, east, front east door, the <coughs> back side, which is going to be the focus uh, in going forward after the production phase three, that stuff is unchanged. Yeah. FMA, uh, being a three phase <coughs> project, before all these changes, there only was one way in for the trucks, and if someone wanted to walk to the pond, there'd, there'd be heavy trucks driving by with deliveries. So this is a better, much a better improvement. Did I, I miss where like the contractors and construction workers were going to park during the construction? Did you say that? I missed it. I think they're going to park. Yeah, they're going to park throughout the site because we have an excess of parking spaces. We also dedicate the area off-site okay. right here highlighted in pink, okay. available to them as well. Because I know that was one of the chief's concerns. So. You know, I, I just ask the board to keep in mind that, uh, you know, a lot of these issues um, are going to come under the direct uh, control and supervision of the building inspector during construction. Mm -hmm. and, and he's really going to have the responsibility of uh, all of you on this. Um, if necessary, um, Golden Pond will um, arrange for um, uh, further off-site uh, parking uh, as may be necessary or, or recommended uh, or required by the building inspector. So, you know, I, I, I appreciate that you want to look at this, but I, I think that, you know, there's some issues that we just can't foresee, and, and the, the building inspector is the, is the person that's going to handle the, uh, the responsibility of, of regulating this. Yeah, I think from a day-to-day -day perspective, absolutely. Right? But I think from our point of view, it's just is the plan you know, designed and laid out in such a way that you address, to the extent you can, those concerns before. Well, and, and, I, and I think on 62 West Main Street, and we provided you with a lease um, and, yeah. and a plot plan of that, I mean, there's an enormous amount of space uh, yeah. there to... to, to um, point acknowledged. 
without question. Okay. Through you, friend. Yes, sir. Um, <coughs> for our proposed conditions, we have seven of them, and four of them are related to construction. So, with your permission, can we just can I just read through those quickly? So, instead of like at the end of the whole project flying through them, I think this would be a good point to, sure. for me to read through. Yeah, well, why don't you do that? So it's on page four of the handout. Yeah. Proposed conditions. If everybody has that, I'm just going to read through them, and then I'll just pause it. There's four. So numbers one, two, five, and seven are related to construction. So I'll just pause after each of the four. And if you guys, anybody has any comments, just jump in. So number one, the applicant is responsible for mitigating all construction-related impacts, including erosion, siltation, and dust control in a timely manner. Number two, the applicant should regularly remove construction trash and debris from the site in accordance with good construction practice. No tree stumps, demolition material, trash, or debris shall be burned or buried on the site. Number five, the director of municipal inspections inspects site plans under construction for compliance with the approved decision of site plan review. If the director of municipal inspections determines at any time before or during construction that a registered professional engineer or other outside professional is required to assist with the inspections of the stormwater management system or any other component of the site plan, the applicant shall be responsible for the cost of those inspections. And lastly, number seven, constructions may occur only between the hours of seven and seven, Monday through Friday, Saturdays eight to four, pursuant of blah, blah, blah. So I, I think everybody's good with that. I just thought it would be a good opportunity to call them out instead of rushing through them at the very end. So thank you. And to the project manager, uh, comment on that is, and this, these may change. We may add to them or uh, amend them as, as we find further information back and forth. Yes, without question. We'll talk about that as we go through it and, and the completion. So, but I don't think any of those seem onerous at all to hopefully the proponent, and it's something we'll be able to bake in here at the end. Any other questions about the construction management component? Comments from the public? Seeing none, Jennifer? All right, um, review by other boards or committees. Uh, I'll take it in reverse order. Design Review Board has already reviewed this, and they're, they're all good with it? Yep, no recommendations, approved of this. Yep. And then CONCOM, they're actually meeting? Uh, they're not meeting this evening any yeah. longer. They've been continued to? September 18th. A great deal of the stormwater is in the buffer zone to a couple of those wetlands resource areas. So until we make some real headway on the stormwater management, conservation has, has suggested that we should kind of push it out until we've had a chance to finalize the plan and, and embed it through beta. So we'll be back to see them in September. So September, September 18th is the yes. meeting date with those guys. Jen, does that fall out. on the same time that we have uh, any meeting? I don't believe so. Uh, our next one well, would be September 25th. We meet on the 11th and the 25th. The 11th and the 25th, right? For the earliest for these guys would be the 25th. Could also be a, potentially October 16th is the other date. So we'll leave that to you know, figure out where, where you guys might want to fall on that based on the information coming out of CONCOM. Do we have space on the 25th? Wide open. <laughs> uh, <laughs> open. So, um, can we could tentatively we pencil them in? Squeeze them in. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe. <laughs> we can find our own. Appreciate that. <laughs> so. um, all right. Any other questions on? I don't know that there's a whole lot more. Yeah. We can do tonight. for this evening. Yeah. Uh, Public discussion, questions on the site plan, the revisions. I think we need to wait really for the next round um, and getting feedback from Beta mm -hmm. as well as ConCom are the kind of the big outstanding issues from the group. Um, you know, I'm thinking 9, 10, 11, 12, and even really those big ones, I'm not sure we could do a, lot, a whole lot of due diligence on those until we get the revision from the applicant, as well as the feedback from CONCOM and the and beta. Um, but if I'm missing anything, please let the board members let me know. Uh, any other comments? 
don't know, from board members or any comments from the public? Jennifer, if we don't have anything else, we should probably close out the, the public yeah, hearing. Just continue to. And, oh, I'm sorry, continue answer. the public hearing until the 25th or October 16th, whatever. Um, the whatever's better for the applicant. Whatever's better for the applicant. The 25th, the, the September 25th. September 25th. 25th. 7:30. Okay. 7:30, gentlemen. Can I, can I, before we, hold on, before we, we, uh, you vote to continue. I just want to, uh, just to review the outstanding issues that are that we're going to discuss. It would be 7C, um, 7E, 7F, 7G as it relates to uh, SP3, yeah. 8A, and then 9 through 13. And well, 9 through 12 and more closer. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, he's he's and, hopeful. <laughs> <laughs> and that and those are the only issues that uh, that the planning board is going to is going to. Yes, consider. that's the only thing that I have. I think that's also in the context. Well, I think beta uh, you know feedback is incorporated within that as well as com com feedback. So yes. As long as those things are included, Wayne, I think we probably got a pretty robust agenda for the 25th and hopefully at that point if, if, hopefully everything goes well okay at that meeting. thank you all right uh, is there a motion to continue the public hearing uh until september 20 at 7 30. second uh motion is second uh, uh any discussion all those in favor aye, aye. aye. all those opposed abstain Motion carries. See everybody on the 25th. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Okay, we've got uh, some time to for our next public uh, hearing. So let's move quickly to establish the bond amount, Fox Mill Road. Yeah, he was going to come. I don't see him though, so I don't know if you want to wait for him to get, or if you okay. want. To, I mean, if it's straightforward, you can just do it, and then when he gets here, he can send it home. Here. Yeah. You can do other stuff too, maybe. Um, is here if you want to do it ourselves. Okay, sign. why don't we uh, talk about the uh, new home sign on East Main Street? Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Welcome. Um, my name is Reed Blute, and uh, I've um, been before the board in the past, so uh, um, but I do see some new faces. So um, I work with Pulte Homes, and we're uh, developing the um, uh, Legacy Farms um, residences there. So um, the reason we're, that we're here tonight is that over uh, in the past several years, we've been developing what we call the South Side, which on uh, you know. Uh, going eastbound on East Main Street, that will be on the right-hand side. And the homes down there are just about complete. <coughs> and th uh, during that period of time, during the sales um, uh, uh, segment of the, of the home building there on the south side, we've had a temporary sales construction sign on the right-hand side uh, near the intersection of um, Legacy Farm South Road and uh, East Main Street. So the reason I'm here tonight is that uh, with the completion of that side, we're, uh, we've been asked to um, relocate that particular sign, to, to remove it. And uh, we, looked at, um, uh, we looked at what the best options were to do that. And you know, it's uh, simply to uh, switch it over to the other side of the street. That's our request. Um, and we think it, um, it makes sense to do that from a couple of uh, reasons couple of perspectives I mean uh, first and foremost um, it would be, it's important first and foremost for people to be able to find out where the new home construction is <coughs> see and as um, I'm sure many of you not all of you have been up in that vicinity and uh, it's quite a distance to get from East Main Street up to where the homes are actually being built even to the intersection of where Franklin Road comes in and Legacy Farm North uh, continues up to where the new homes are. So, um, in order to facilitate um, or to minimize confusion, we think it's important to have that directional sign 
at that location again across the street from where it used to be or where it is now it's, it's just blank now uh, but the signpost is still there so we think it's important to, to have that there uh, so that um, we can minimize confusion and get people in the direction where they're trying to get to as quickly as possible and we do realize that some of the folks who live on um, uh, on the, the south side thus far um, folks have been driving through there looking for the new homes and and uh, you know they're they're not there uh, any longer so uh, again it would help to redirect the traffic away from where the neighborhoods are now the, the occupied neighborhoods and get folks in the right direction as quickly as possible to uh, to, you know, to minimize uh, driving around, taking wrong turns. So um, that's really what our request is. You know, again, it's essentially the same sign. We're just um, asking for permission to move across the street. And we submitted an application. Um, again, um, as I'm sure you all know, Legacy Farms is a, um, uh, is a, a plan unit development under the Osmud zoning. So it's all one big project, so to speak. Um, there's and uh, and we think that the location that we've identified um, virtually across the street is is a good spot for it. any questions Jennifer if I'm not mistaken the request was to remove the sign that relocate the sign correct yeah so just a little so the Osmond has its own separate design guidelines um, and sign regulations um, and it requires that real estate signs be on the premise in which they are referring to. So on the south side, that sign was on the larger parcel in which the homes that it was referring to was located. If they were to move it across the street, clearly the homes that it's referring to are up Legacy Farms Road North, so it's off site. So there is provisions in the design guidelines for the planning board to waive provisions of the design guidelines with written requests and so that's what they're here for tonight so the request is um, to locate is basically to locate a real estate sign off premise so if, I may yeah, if I'm Jim, not mistaken there's a temporary sign up now it's covered though yes it's yes, not the covered over the weekend it, I just drove by and just covered okay right but now. it wasn't covered over the weekend the one on Legacy, I don't know Legacy what Farms was Road North. No, 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 on East Main Sorry. Street. I know, but oh. there was a uh, sign on Legacy Farms Road North. Oh, I didn't drive small that sign said New Homes pointed north that was just about 100, 150 feet north of East Main Street. Oh, I didn't see that one. And again, that, you know, with uh, relocation of this sign to the proper side of the road, that little sign that you mentioned would be superfluous and you know that could be you know removed um, but I think there's just one thing uh, that I'd like to share is that um, oh, let me hold this up for one second uh, this is a, a legacy farm uh, site plan with um, you know route uh, 135 East Main Street coming through here so the area that we're talking about is right here um, my um, uh, my interpretation is, and clearly there's, there's, there's many different interpretations or, or several, is that this is all one uh, property, it's all one site, it's all one plan unit development, and the locating the sign from this side of the road to that side of the road, um, I think there's, um, that it's still on the same track, and I, I don't think it's a off-premise sign. But that's just my opinion. But I, I want to share the reasons why, you know, we think that with, with the board because, you know, it is all one development. So, um, uh, any other questions? I'd be happy to try to answer. Any comments from the board? I did. Um, so, are you proposing to put it in the same lot where the historic home is, the the eighty three? It's on the cor It's on the corner of that parcel. Yes. Okay. So it'll be next to Legacy Farm Road North. And how far away are the homes that were the townhouses that you're pointing to? Are they just they're visible from there or no? No, they're not visible from there. No. So again, if I could refer to this, this is an older uh, <coughs> version of the of the overall plan, but the the uh, juxtaposition is similar. So with East Main down here, the sign proposed here, the homes that are being built now are in this area. 
This is a future area. We haven't started those yet. Um, but there's uh, a section of road here that passes uh, Western Nurseries uh, mm -hmm. store and some of their growing areas that be on the right as you drive up Legacy uh, Farm Road North. Mm -hmm. And then Fipp Street comes off on the left before you have to wind your way up the road to get to where the, the new construction is up here. So we're trying to minimize confusion and folks driving around in circles who might be down here trying to decide, well, should I go this way, should I go that way, and get them going in the right direction. That's our, that's our goal anyway. Yeah, I'm sympathetic to the, um, you know, wanting to avoid confusion, but I don't like the idea of the sign near the historic home if possible. Uh, but I don't, I don't know if there's another place or what other people think. But. But no one's living in that home, are they? No. No, it's vacant. Through the chair? Yes. Um, Reed, uh, there are two separate issues, though, when you're showing us that map. Um, it's not contiguous necessarily because there is um, Western Nurseries there. And uh, when you say the other, the other sign that's there is super, super, superfluous, it's, uh, well, it's also against our town regulations. So uh, you're asking us to uh, waive what, what our regulations are. Um, but keep in mind, when you say you have a right to the street, uh, I'm not sure exactly what you mean, but uh, state money paid for a lot of that road. And um, if our current laws say the signs should be up near where the houses are, then that's where it should be. Um, so we have to deal with the way the regulations are. And if on uh, this day and age, it's 2017, if someone is getting that lost, uh, sure, it's easy to take a left or a right. Uh, but uh, it's, it's, you're kind of mixing your business needs ahead of the town's bylaws, which you guys had agreed to when you started when we started the project, so I don't hear, I haven't heard anything that's compelling enough to change the side of the street for that sign. Could you still keep it there and just have the arrow point, which is what it's actually doing? We could keep the sign right where it is, which and this is a picture of right. it it's before sweet. we covered it over. We were asked to, to cover it. Oh, over, it's so on it's, this. It's on the south side. Now it's blind. It's right and it's pointing the other way. Yeah. Right. They'd still need your permission for that. He's right. asking for a waiver. Still, but this is, right. this is where it has waiver. been for the past few years. Right. But it, it previously, it looked like that. It didn't have the big arrow. Be, yeah, a little arrow at the top, but the homes were right on. There was no confusion as to where the homes were because of the, um, the sales center that was right there. But then this is Next how arrow. we adjusted it to get people to go to the right, to the north side, rather than to the south side. And I'd be perfectly happy leaving it here if the if that is a more reasonable, easier to allow location. I, I don't okay. think that makes sense, and I don't think Frank was aware of that when he said it. Right? I mean, to me, it's a it's a net zero. You just move from one side of the road to the other side of the road. And to your point, if if we don't allow this, where you see people like selling houses or stuff, they're just going to staple some cheap sign up on the telephone pole and I'd rather have a, well, a against the rules too. No, no, it's not, I don't think. Temporary signs. I'd be more ha happy to leave the sign as it is pointing northward. It, we don't want to put it where the historic home is and uh, well. Can I ask a question? Go ahead, come here. Uh, it, it, does it need to be up closer where the house, houses are being built to be in compliance or is the sign not in compliance no matter what? Well, it, right now it's not in compliance, but if the planning board grants a waiver, it will be. But if we, if it was moved up to where the homes are? If it was on the premise of premises to where the homes are being sold, it would be in compliance. Okay. I, I have a preference for complying with the bylaws. That's right. Okay. So, yeah. Yes. Do we really expect that just moving the sign to the other side of the road is going to give people clarity as to where the new houses are? I mean, we're going to have an arrow pointing in one direction on one side of the road and an arrow pointing in that same direction on the other side of the road. And what difference does that really... Well, this, that there would only sign? be one sign, not right. two. So there wouldn't be... Uh, I just want to make sure we're clear. 
Mm -hmm. So right right now, or well, before we were asked to, to cover it over, this is what the sign looked like with the arrow pointing north. Uh, it, it's, um, so the new proposal is to move that, is to not have this sign here any longer. We would remove this mm -hmm. and put it on the other side of the road with the arrow pointing from just like that. The so I guess the question is like, did the arrow help people find oh, yes. the north? Yes. Can, can I comment on that? Yes. Because the before they were going, or, they were turning right instead of turning left. If right. So then I guess the point is downtown. Then, so if an arrow on one side of the street gets people to the right place, why do we need to put an arrow on the other side of the street? And why are we going through this? It has to be waved no matter what side of the street it's on. Okay. Can I just ask well, for clarification? But, you, you want to put this at the bottom of Franklin Road, correct? Uh, no. No, it's actually no. Legacy no, North Road. Now it's been it's been renamed. North, yeah. Okay, well, yeah. but that's the road. The intersection of East Main East and, and Legacy North. Yes. So so right now, that's correct. Sign which is. right now you cannot see the construction. Is that what you're? That's asking? correct. You cannot. Okay, I just wanted to clarify. No. That. So I just wanted to make one comment about the sign being on that side. If if you were given, to to your point, if you were given directions like uh, yeah Pulte new homes are you know go down West Main Street and it's one of those rights up there you're gonna be looking on the right side of the road you're not gonna be looking on the left side of the road to try to make a right that's the only rationale I would say I guess so it depends I, on what side of the road you're coming from well I mean but <laughs> I mean what is the big concern I'm not understanding the big concern is it just the historic home that nobody's living at or if I can yeah just to well, clarify by law. Jennifer if we waived Similar. How long has this been in effect? When was this Since first 2010. approved? So 2010. So 2010. So it's been seven years. How long do you plan to have construction going on on the north side? Seven years. <laughs> long uh, approximately that amount of time, yes. So seven years. So when this was initially approved, I just want to, we, we talk about precedent. When this was initially approved, the anticipation was that this was not going to be allowed. And we've lived seven years with it kind of on the books. Now we're looking to go back and question what our predecessors did in reviewing the, putting the uh, restriction in place. And we're saying we're going to make a waiver that's not temporary, that's gonna last potentially for seven years. So just as we look at it, I think we have to look at it as part of the big picture of not a directional sign, but in effect, 14 years of a temporary for sale sign. that will be up there that our forefathers, so to speak, and foremothers decided at the time was not going to be permitted. So as we look at it, has the situation changed enough that we want to go back and say it wasn't permitted then, the situation has changed, we want to permit it now. So kind of look at it in that light. So I'll throw it over for discussion. Just a question. Why are you saying it wasn't permitted then because it's been there for seven years? Are you saying it was illegal it, there? It, it wasn't no. permitted. Go ahead. Oh, it's, oh, it's, okay. I'm sorry. It's permitted because it's on this, the, location, the location, the premise of where the building okay. is happening. It will be permitted right. again up um, Legacy Farm Road where the construction right. is, right? They can put this sign up right. where their right. construction so actually is. Right. So someone said that it's... it's so, to not compliant it, where it is, and to leave just, it on so that Main, was a mistake. To leave it on no, Main Street no. so far away from where they want now to point people is why it's not What you have to understand, David, is it now refers to a different set of homes right. yeah. that oh. are further away. So as soon as that closes, no okay, I understand. Got it. Okay, right. thank you. So it was compliant. It was, it was. All right. So Until they no sold the last home. Is. Right. It could right. be if we allowed them to be up further. Right. If they They're asking for a waiver to put it down closer to the street. On Main Street. Complicated. East Main Street. Thank you, Mr. Bassioni. <laughs> if I may? Yes. To the chair. So I don't 
see any issue with the sign being there personally. Um, but we do have a bylaw in effect. Now, that being stated, um, Pulte has Legacy Farms North that we have to um, bring into this, this um, conversation is that anybody um, given um, a land, piece of land that they're trying to sell, they can put up a sign. We, we have that provision in our bylaw that they can put a sign up for their, for their land. Now, if we take the whole piece of land and not segment it into, into subdivisions, which we have, um, it would be one parcel of land with homes for sale. If I correct, this is not part of the Pulte land. It's not. Yeah, I think it's not contained. It's not. It's, it's even though the uh, uh, it, proponent said it was one piece of land, it's, it's not contiguous. It's part contigu of the Legacy Farms land, but it's, but not, it's not part of the Pulte control it's land. It's not contiguous, right? Unlike it was on the south. Correct. So the north and south are not contiguous. No, correct. no, no, but this this particular parcel but the where they would put it. But the north and south are not contiguous because East Main Street runs between Right. Them. right. Right. But this is not a parcel that Pulte controls now or will control in right. the future. Right. Would it be contiguous without East Main Street? I don't think so, right? So. Isn't there a big gap of land? We're talking about the start of really the intersection of Franklin and North Legacy is where the right. development starts, right? So. so to my point, if I may, um, is that Pulte um, has, you know, done a great job working with us and doing everything that, that we've we've um, put forth pretty much um, to date as far as I've, I've seen. And um, for this signage to be there, um, I, I, I think that maybe we should grant um, a, a way to give them the access. But I don't feel that being up the road away from where we are is probably the proper place for that. I think that there could be maybe someplace a little bit Go ahead. I just, I just think that, that closer to Legacy Farms um, North Road, access road there, wouldn't that be more um, in, in tune with what we're looking for as far as your direction and, and access to that area? Um. Because it's past it, it goes. It, it's much past the Legacy Farms North Road. Am I, am I correct? Where you want to place the sign? So we want to place it at the intersection of East Main Street and Legacy Farm North. Right. Which is probably a quarter of a mile, if I had to guess. Which is oh, from where the building is going on. No, from no. Yeah, no, not the building. The, the beginning of the property at Franklin and uh, Legacy split, North. The split. The split. A quarter oh, mile or less. Franklin Road. Right. Yeah, yeah, I mean it's, roughly. It's, roughly. Uh, yeah. It's a, few thousand feet whatever a couple thousand feet I haven't made it but I think to the point Cliff is he's trying to help control the traffic right, right? do we really want more traffic driving around Hopkinton looking for that's my own take yeah I mean my one question is, is is that the only location that's viable on the, the property of I assume it's the old house on that side is that the only spot that's that's the only spot yeah so well, that is uh, owned and controlled by the legacy farm okay. developer. If we grant this waiver, what precedent are we setting? Like what is what is the concern of the board, I guess? Can I I mean I am just trying to imagine <laughs> I, I guess I'm trying to figure out what the big uh, concern uh, is on I the part of some of our board members. Is something that was addressed ten years ago, approved by the board, yeah. considered by the board, agreed to by everybody. Now, seven years later, for really no change that has occurred in control of land, et cetera, we're now going back and questioning what the board did 10 years but ago. But I don't but things, think they but did. things have changed. They didn't do a waiver, Les. They didn't need to do a waiver because it was on the property. Right, because, but that was considered at the time. So it was considered at the time that it had to be on the property. So I, I'm just saying. I'm not saying right, right, right. Rent, I but just saying. consider we're now going back and revisiting no, okay. and opening up. But I would just argue that reports. your predecessor board would not have put in a waiver clause if they didn't anticipate that right. there could have been potentially an opportunity for something like this to occur. And they did in here indicate that 
uh, may be waived by the planning board as part of the process based on the finding that such modifications are necessary or appropriate to meeting the development and design objectives of the Osmond district. So I think you could make the argument that the development objectives of the Osmond are being met. Could make that argument. Yeah. Right. Through the chair, um, no one's mentioned Franklin Road residents yet. Um, and I think if the sign were on the property where the buildings are, it would be less confusion for people driving down Franklin Road the wrong way, just as easily as they would turn down uh, Legacy Park South. Mm -hmm. So on that basis, uh, I would like to support the regulations as it stands and motion that we deny this request. Is that the proper format? I think yes, because I learned the hard way last yeah. time. I think that's the proper <laughs> format. I have a suggestion if somebody wants to hear it. I think part of the issue and part of the confusion is the size of Legacy Farms Road North sign. It's not easy to spot. And I think the directions you give are turn on Legacy Farms North. So if there was a more visible Legacy Farms North sign, it might actually serve two purposes. It might allow greater identification where the homes are and may also help in establishing the downtown bypass to which Legacy Farms North Road was supposed to be. So in effect, by improving the signage at that location, we kind of kill two birds with one stone, is it provides greater identification for Legacy Farms North. I'm sure you give directions, Legacy Farms North, if it was a more visible sign, it would permit that, and it may also help. Isn't that a standard it? town sign, street sign? It's so not a sta It's not a standard. It might. Be, is it a standard legacy sign? Because it's not a standard Hopkinton sign. For the street sign. For the street sign. If you look yeah. at it, and the north seems to be added on. If you look at the picture. Oh yeah. That's a good I, point. Honestly, I I um, I mean I think you're right about that. It wasn't something that we were involved with. That, uh, Legacy Farms, master developer, uh, I, I that Baystone did that. To you, Mr. Chair, I, I don't know what the current sign is, take your word on it, but I would be strongly against having a different street sign for one street in the town. It is, the it is currently different. Well, you're, you're suggesting making it bigger, though, I think. I would suggest making it bigger in that it would also help the issue that a lot of people don't know about the di downtown bypass, yeah. and that... We continually complain about the traffic in the center of town. This might actually help. Yeah, like I said, I would strongly place. disagree with that because now you're setting a precedence that different areas of town can have different size street signs, and that's that's a can of worms to me. If I may, this, uh, this is a photo of the, the South Street sign, yep. but I think it's the same sign, and I think this is what you mean. It says Legacy Farms. Then on top yeah, that's got this south. tiny this little. One says south, but the other one says north. Right. right. So this let's pass this. Add on. It's that same sign. Yeah. So right. look at this sign as a. Well, I would, I would be in support of putting a, a normal street sign. Well, there I, I would just of, also remind the board that there's still a pri both private roads and not public ways, so okay. uh, we're not required to have town regulated street signs on them at this point, and. We're kind of getting off topic. Yes. We have a public hearing in two minutes. Two minutes. Could I think there's a, a, a motion on the table. So I'm going to second that motion. So the motion on the table is? To mm -hmm. deny the request based on the uh, town regulations. So we have? Well, it's based on your design guidelines. Based on design guidelines. And we have a second. Any further discussion? I just want to. Uh, just clarify, the sign could be put up near where the units are being built. We would have no objection with that. That's correct. That, that's the only alternative that he has currently, correct? That's correct. Could I, could, if I could just add for discussion, uh, I believe in the other zoning districts of town, we don't allow off-premise business signs anyway. And uh, I know this wouldn't be setting a precedent for other zones, but I think the reason we don't allow them is because it just could be, town could become too cluttered with signs if CVS could have a couple of off-premise signs and then Price Dropper and then it just, th this is just one sign, but I think we don't want signs everywhere. Through you, Mr. Chair? Yeah. This, even though it's seven years, this is a temporary sign. Yeah. 
and then that's the, the far end of it. It could sell in three years, and it could be a three-year sign. It's almost that's a common, common law sign at this point. Yeah. <laughs> okay, Lance, we have to uh, any yeah. comments from uh, the public? Having a have you want to come up? Oh, I'm sure. You want now? Do you want to come up to the microphone? Identify yourself. Oh, uh, I, I might quote you in the paper on this, but go ahead. Um, Robert Falcioni, Hopkinton News. Having had a downtown business uh, for 25 years, I'm kind of acquainted with uh, how strangers come and go in the downtown and the needs that they have. And uh, Mr. Blute is asking for a directional sign, which would be very, very helpful to newcomers. And I think, Mr. Ferrari, Ch Mr. Chairman, that you had a great idea about, if not with Mr. Blute's sign, it's some sign that directs people down Legacy North and lets them know somehow uh, that that's a shortcut from the downtown. And a beautiful view, I might add. Yes. Uh, but there doesn't seem to be much purpose in having a directional sign uh, at the conclusion of the, uh, of the path. Uh, people, you're telling people to come here while you're already there. So it just doesn't seem to make much sense to um, force Mr. Blue to have the sign on that property. I, I think it's a great idea to have that. I'd prefer that they advertise in Hop News, but um, this would be a great way to direct people uh, who get to that area and let them know where they're going, rather than once again riding down. There are cars just aimlessly riding down Legacy South Road. I, I go there quite often for photographs. And you know that these cars don't belong. You can tell they're going slow. They're looking for something. And they're not looking for the homes that are already occupied, I suppose, because they go right out. I would, uh, I would, I would hope you vote against denying the request and uh, submit another, another uh, motion to accept the request. Thank, Thank you. you. I just, uh, I thought the. Uh, the chairman's uh, idea of a, a larger sign was interesting. I, I worry a lot because we're going to add a lot of homes to a certain area of town, and I depend on mutual aid. And um, even when I drive down Route 85 right now, the section that where Rafferty Road was, it's now <laughs> Legacy North. Um, other than myself being really familiar with it, I'm trying to think of what might cue without invading the rest of the town's kind of character, but what might help cue responding people because we're going to be I'll be directing people in either from Route 135 or Route 85 to come into an area of town and help us and if there is a way that the sign could look a little more visible um, I don't think it would be a bad thing thank you yeah. any further discussion I have a discussion comment point if I may Muriel mm -hmm. um, I agree with Mr. Falcioni from the point of view of it is going to reduce confusion it does stay true to the spirit of what the Osmud has designed or has laid out, um, and I don't think it's going to be necessarily a blight. On I know it's an exception, um, but I think in this case, given the impact that it has, it's one that I think it would be warranted. Okay. Further comments? Yeah, I wanted to say two things. Um, I I really like the idea of a more identifying sign eventually. Um, if that is something that comes to pass, Legacy Farms North, Legacy Farms South, it's attractive, and that we do have them a couple of places. Um, but I, th I thought that was a really interesting idea and from a public safety standpoint, probably really helpful. Um, I think that for me, the hang up is that um, I can't imagine that the confusion is so great, but the argument can be made, I suppose, as Amy was saying, that anybody could say a new business or a new home or a new development, people are confused, so we need signs on the major road in order to direct them there. I just, I don't see the need um, to change the bylaw. I understand that he would like to advertise his home, so I totally support that. Uh, but I don't think we need to change the bylaw to necessarily facilitate uh, a private business. I mean, I would want to support their development and, and be sensible, but I don't think we need to change the bylaw to, to uh, direct his sales. And, and could I just comment on that? I don't think we're looking to change the bylaw. I think we're looking to right. to to, to uh, grant a waiver, right. and should another business in town feel that they need additional signage for confusion purposes or whatever, they would 
come to us and ask for a waiver and we would weigh those circumstances. I, I, I'm, I'm assuming that this isn't a change in the bylaw. No, you're right. right. You're right. We're, we're waiving the bylaw. Um, it's a regulation, not a bylaw. It's a regulation. Sorry about that. Yeah. yeah. So we're waiving the And I, I don't know that it really applies to anywhere else in time because the Osmond is, is unique. Um, but I would, I would be hard pressed to make myself personally make decisions for individual businesses at any time to waive bylaws or regulations or, or established designs um, just to um, facilitate their sales. To the chair, I'm, I want to echo what Ariel is saying. Is my issue is the <coughs> precedent that we're setting that we can't, we don't have good signage. People won't find us, so we need to put our signage elsewhere and direct people. I think that's a poor precedent to set because there's going to be more developments, and do we really need to have you know the big neon go this way? I just don't think that if we already have a regulation saying no, I don't see why we'd want to set that precedent of, of granting waivers based on uh, inaccessibility. Do we need to open public? Yes. If we could pause. And do yes. That. Yeah, we pause I'll and make, make a, a motion. motion to open the public hearing. Um, and uh, continue it till the conclusion of this conversation. Do you have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain. <coughs> so carry. Comment for the record. Uh, Ms. Falcione is here covering uh, the, our meeting as a member of the media, and members of the media generally don't get involved in the stories they're covering. So I uh, want to throw that out there. Well, isn't that great? How that's I great new ground. <laughs> I've been doing it since 2000. I always do appreciate your, I, really I appreciate our conversations. I'd like to know who's the person that you were speaking for earlier. I'll give you her name. She's a former planning board member. She'd be happy to talk to you, I'm sure. Okay, I think we've had enough discussion on this. Can I just add just one sentence? If it would help the board in looking favorably upon a request, I'd be happy to work with um, whomever is appointed and authorized to um, to make the Legacy Farm North part of the sign. We could add something to the top. We could add a separate sign to help to um, uh, you know to satisfy some of the comments that were made by the chief and others about making the road more the road sign more visible. So I just <laughs> want to share that. With okay, you. thank you. I have to make a comment then with that new input. Sorry. Um, the town, as a general, has decided against putting signs in developments because they want to be inclusive, like White Oaks, Highland Parks, mm -hmm. such and forth. If we make a special sign for this particular development, we're going against that principle. And that's, I'm just talking about a permanent sign. Um, what we have in front of us is a, a temporary sign, so I just wanted to um, express my concerns against variations in the, the permanent signs. Okay, so the proposal on the table is to oppose the approval, <coughs> correct? And that's been seconded. All in favor of the proposal say aye. 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 One, two, three, four, five. You mean the motion? The motion. Those against? Abstain? So the proposal, the motion has carried five to four. Thank you for your time. Thank you. I Thank appreciate you, you uh, discussing it and uh, going, through, going through it so <laughs> fully. Yeah. Although I'm disappointed. And off, off, the, okay. off the record, <laughs> I could suggest coming back with something alternative, more of a directional sign. Mr. Chairman, I might add that another way to uh, to comply with the law is to uh, perhaps get some space from Western Nurseries. That big sign they have there that's about uh, two feet by two, I don't know what, 18, because the farm, the farm property can have a larger sign outside the boundaries of the... Uh, uh, we're going to take a five-minute break and then start the public cool. hearing on 52 Wilson.
Cliff's missing. Just oh, we have Cliff. 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 One person missing. Can I ask a question of you can catch Cliff up on the yes. um, If we were to make our motions, even if we felt like we didn't want something to pass, if we made our motions in the affirmative, then they're really more clearly um, as the results come out. So even, Frank, if you did not want the, to grant the waiver, you could motion grant the waiver and see if you get a second and then when the votes come out it's a yes a thumbs up or a no Denied. just sometimes I think it's more clear but I just throw that out there for people to consider like we get we got into a little bit of that with um, the Chamberlain there as well and I it, yeah no that, that makes sense it, it just sometimes is a little clearer how we get into that trouble on town meeting floor too sometimes wait a yes is a no a no is a yes <laughs> um, so just a thought so we're going to tell whether the applicants 52 Wilson come up and, and sit up, but we're waiting for one of our members. So sit down slowly. <laughs> <laughs> it might be an easel, but um, the other guys have it. No, it's bring your own. Bring your own easel deck. <laughs> BYOE. <Sorry. laughs> BYOE. BYOE. Yeah. Bring your own easel. Oh, yeah, that's the camera. It's over here. It's that camera right there. Cliff's just out in the hall. He's coming apart. Let's start without him because he's having a good time out there. <laughs> well, now that we've closed this hearing. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks a lot, everybody, for waiting. Appreciate it was just that. one vote that day. One vote. <laughs> <laughs> it's rough when that happened that way. Okay. Do we have to vote to reopen the uh, hearing? Oh, uh, yes. I'll make a motion to reopen Second. the hearing. All in favor? Aye. 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 Well, Jennifer, do you want to give the overview? Um, so this is a minor site plan um, for a construction of a warehouse and small machine shop um, for as an accessory use to the existing allowed use on site. Um, I just want to just give a little bit of background as to the delay in the board reviewing the project. Um, the application was submitted in May of this past year and upon my review. Uh, initial review of the application. Um, one of the site plan requirements is that the board find that it's in compliance with zoning. And so I just had some questions as to whether or not the use complied with the zoning district. So I had a legal opinion sent to, request sent to town council. Um, and there were some discussions I know with Eversources Council and our council regarding that. And that decision came back in July. So technically it was an official application until July. And that's why it took so long to get before you guys okay. um the, the legal opinion was in your packet that indicated it was an accessory use to the the allowed use on site um and that the board was entitled to review an under site plan review um it's pretty straightforward i let them go over what the actual project is thank you mm -hmm. good evening uh, appreciate the opportunity to present the project to the board my name is Jim Blackburn. I represent Eversource Energy and the Capital Projects Manager for the LNG facility in Hopkinton. Um, I'm joined with Glenn Stewart and Richard Drake, both with AZ Corp. They are our engineering design firm for this project. Um, they'll walk us through the, uh, the plans and the, uh, the, the drawings that we have with us um, and answer any of your questions. Uh, just to give you a, a, a very high level summary of what we're trying to do here, um, the facility's been in operation for 47 years. Um, we are looking to increase our warehouse space. We currently have zero uh, storage space, uh, dedicated storage space. We, uh, we utilize Connex boxes, so Connex storage boxes out in the field. Uh, we have some space in and around our equipment uh, areas that we store, uh, whether it's uh, consumables, uh, safety supplies, or machinery, uh, spare equipment. Um, this warehouse space will give us the ability to store this equipment now indoors in an air-conditioned heated space uh, with a lot more security around it. It'll have guard access readers to the doorways. It'll provide us a lot more control over our supplies and, and warehousing. So that's the intent of the project, and I'll, uh, I'll pass it off uh, to these gentlemen to 
walk you through the uh, plans and answer any questions. Thank you. I'm going to walk over to. So this is this shows the uh, the building on the site itself. It is located. This is Wilson Street here. It's back off the road. It's uh, just under 5,000 square feet. Um, shows here all the setback requirements and that coverage requirements and that, et cetera. So it's pretty, th this is a just an empty area right now. We're not doing any demo to accommodate this, this building. Like that. that shows within the proximity of, of the, the property lines. More detail around the building, showing this is the existing drive. Um, asphalt drive will connect to it with three open garage doors. Uh, we show the, uh, the, the drainage around the building and so on. And it's very, it, this is very straightforward. It's a pre engineer metal building, um, again, under 5,000 square foot. The bulk of the, of the space is for um, into the floor plan. So this is primarily storage. These are show where the racks are going to go. There is an overhead crane to move equipment as it comes in, move materials and so on. Small maintenance shop here um, at the request of the Board of Health after their review we've added an eye wash safety shower and maintenance area. We've added men's and ladies restrooms, ADA compliant in the warehouse area. Again, it is, it's very straightforward. pre engineer metal building, three overhead doors, man door here, man door here, man door here, and here. Oh, well, we don't have that. Yeah, I was gonna say, that was on your table in front of you tonight. Oh, that was submitted today. Yeah, she had it It doesn't show the, the additional restrooms, I don't think. The little one does. One, the little one on your yeah. table. Oh, right I'm sorry. Yeah. Oh, okay. I'm sorry, Muriel. I have your. Oh, here it is. oh, I didn't have it. Shoo. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> and if I may, through the chair, uh, I, I really do appreciate your responding and adding those features in. Yeah. We, we That's a, it's okay. We're sharing. We're, I'm fine, Jen. Well, while everybody's scrambling for their drawings, can I ask you a question <laughs> through the chair? Yes. Um, so just uh, what kind of foundation will it be? Just concrete concrete s slab or no, just a re Footings here, board wall. How long and deep deeper the footings? Six feet or? Uh, four feet. Four, four feet? feet, okay. Thanks. And then uh, just a haunch slab between the uh, foundation. Thank you. With the plumbing in, involved in the flooring? I'm sorry? The plumbing and everything would be involved in the flooring that you pour as a slab? Yes, um, it'd be on, on below the slab. Below the slab? Yeah. So there is some construction going on there. With, you're saying that there isn't anything disturbing to the to the present condition of the property, but you are going to be digging to put in plumbing and um, septic wherever that is, or, or tie into whatever is available. Is that yes, correct? Yes, we will. My comment was only we're not we're not demolishing any yeah, no demolition. or structures or anything to accommodate this. That does not. Yeah, that's what I heard also. No demolition. This is just an open field of of gravel now with some connex boxes. In between existing open, yeah. Um, so, so you're going to establish the new slab, put in the plumbing, do put a foundation that. in the slab inside but, of that. Yeah. Under the slab will be will be the you know appropriate plumbing. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you. I just wanted that for clarity. This also, while well, I have this out, it shows the uh, block wall separating the maintenance area from the. Is that by fire code or or not? Is that what we're doing that for? You're doing that for is a block? No, it, no, not necessarily. Okay. Uh, what was what was the reason behind the, the differentiation? Um, we just needed separation between them. Um, we're, we're, there are different areas that have different uses. So the maintenance facility, for example, has to have uh, six air changes per hour. Um, that's why we segregated it completely. We actually looked at putting a, a flat roof above it, but we didn't really want storage up there. So we, we brought it all the way up. So we Being the nature of that it's a warehouse 
we wanted you know a more durable wall okay now anything going on inside that workshop is there any combustionables inside the building that you're putting up that would would be um, like exposed to any type of danger that that's why you're putting in a, in a, a, a no okay all right so what's to be stored in the building uh, so in the warehouse area the intention is spare parts uh, consumables so maybe safety supplies or uh, uh, it could be anything from uh, uh, spare pumps and motors to uh, again safety supplies maybe uh, you know, the respirators or the dust masks boxes of uh, uh, materials like that filters, uh, filters. Uh, right now we don't Gaskets. really have any uh, segregated storage on site again it's mostly kind of scattered connex boxes and then the engine room that we've got um, if you've ever walked through for one of the tours there's boxes kind of scattered all over the place so they clutter the area this is a, a means of those getting everything kind of in one segregated area um, the maintenance shop really is for our safety valves um, uh, we go once a year it's a regulatory requirement for us to test all of our safety valves this gives the uh, mechanics an area to, to be able to disassemble those clean those and then test those and then bring those back out to the field Currently, they do them out in the field, or we do have a separate maintenance shop on site. Um, but again, that tends to be another area that's uh, it's not as clean, and uh, it's an area where they, they do a lot more rebuilds and maintenance. So, uh, when you're rebuilding safety valves and such, we, we'd rather that to be a little cleaner space, and this this provides that. Mr. Chairman, um, question for the group. I don't think this has any visibility from Wilson Street, correct? It does not. Is there any visibility on the back from the walking trails on Legacy? <coughs> or is it totally kind of hidden? For lack of a better term? It's the, the property, <coughs> you have the site plan. Yeah, it really shouldn't be. Um, you certainly can't see it from the roadway. Right. I, um, I, from the walking trails, I don't believe so. Yeah. Uh, we did meet with the design review board two weeks ago to discuss yeah. that um, and we, ag we agreed on you know uh, I guess the look of the building is consistent yeah. with the rest of the facility um, I don't believe you'd be able to see that from the walking trails back there okay. so what is this little structure back here is that so this is the uh, this is Wilson this is yeah 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 sorry is that legacy? No, no I, legacy so is a little So this is the, the this roadway. Is uh, no, it's, yeah. This is too close. Yeah, that's, 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 there's like an old it's a trail. Is it a trail? tractor or trail? It's a dirt trail, it's a yeah. dirt trail oh, okay. that comes up through there. But that's not a home or anything? Where we no, this is the, there's a cell phone tower back there. Okay, uh, and this is? Ten, this is the Tennessee Gas property. Okay, so it's all your property. It is, okay. yeah, so Tennessee Gas, uh, Eversource, yeah, Tennessee Eversource. Gas, and Eversource. Okay, okay. so even if they can see it, they're still all part of the same operation. That's right, it's there for Question to the chair. Yes. So for power, um, it would be underground. Uh, we have no. It's it's no, overhead it's on, it's a, on a cable tray. There there is there is an electrical. Um, it's a power distribution MCC. building, right? Right adjacent. Eighteen to feet of it. It'll come over on a cable tray. Cable trays run throughout that facility. That's how they you know they move the piping from point A to point B, as well as the control wiring. So right here is the power distribution building. Okay. So we're going to go overhead in the cable tray right here. Okay. No telephone poles needed? No. no. It's 18 feet, I think. What cable tray will span that without stanchions? And that's standard for our industry. We've, yeah. We've gone away from underground conduit just because of the reliability of it. So everything's above ground on cable tray. Right. So that's consistent with the rest of the facility. Yeah, I think you guys fall into a different category of uh, us not, uh, not having overhead cable wires. Uh, Power wires going from telephone pole to telephone pole. Thank you. So we're following the uh, the outline. Uh, any changes to the outline that was in your packet? And members of the public want to make changes. We'll go into 4A building design. You want to talk a little bit about? Uh, the design of the building and I think we pretty much covered that right yeah, yeah right. just we, we do have exterior elevations where you can see right. what, what you find 
Again, it's pre engineered metal building, metal siding, metal roof, um, <coughs> overhead doors uh, for the materials in. Um, exhaust louvers, so we have to have two air changes per hour in the warehouse itself. So those will provide pressure coming in. The air end will take care of uh, exhaust. Metal uh, aluminum, uh, is it silver? Colored aluminum? Yeah. Gray. I don't know if we decided on the color. We, gray. we talked, about, <laughs> okay. talked about it extensively yeah, just last week. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> uh, stormwater management? Uh, yes, we have stormwater. Um, so, this is the uh, sediment barrier detail we're putting in. Um, Show the, the anti tracking pad here and so on. All of the DMPs are working on it. Do we have any questions? <coughs> no. Lighting. We just have the wall packs, right? Yeah. yeah just just out, we can show what's outdoor lighting, John? Yeah. 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 Just, just on, the, on the building itself, wall packs that we go over. Okay. I just ask what that means. That's all. A wall pack is sconce. these aren't like big right. These aren't like big spotlights that shine. They're just like a sconce light. Right at the door. At each door. Okay. Inside is more conventional. Uh, they call it, you know, uh, interior high bay lighting. Okay. So now now they're all LED. Everything's especially for Eversource. Got to keep it efficient. <laughs> <laughs> Any changes to the overall landscaping screening on the site or? Uh, no, this is an existing open area, so we don't have any intentions of changing any, making any changes to the existing screening. So in the, excuse me, through the chair, is there any, any um, removal of any brush that would buffer that at all? No, it's no. just a flat open space. It's flat open space with actually, uh, it's like light grade trap rock. It's 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 not inch and a half. It's like two to three inch trap rock gotcha. that's down there now, which we'll reuse. You know, was that was that put there for a, a runoff period, a runoff area or something? Or? Don't believe so. Not in that location. Um, Just as a durable surface. Of yeah, we had done previous jobs out there last year. We did that that vaporizer replacement. So that was actually an area that we staged that. PDC building that came to the center of town. Um, a lot of that, I think, may have been put down at the same time just to make sure we, as a 40 ton, 40, 40,000. Um, 40, it was a very yeah, heavy piece, piece of, of equipment work. that we needed a durable area to set it. So a lot of that was done with then dunnage over it to uh, at that time. So I think that's all left over from that project. Okay. Because it wasn't a silt catcher or anything? It, it was that. not, no. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions? Quick comment or question to Jen. You had some concerns about the zoning. Can you explain what kind of zoning they're in? And I um, believe it's an agriculturally zoned um, zoning district. And um, this is typically not in a lot of use in the agriculturally zoned district. Uh, I do understand that they've received a DPU exemption from their use, their existing use, but my concern was more whether or not this particular addition, new construction, fell within their existing zoning exemption from DPU, or they needed to get a new one. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So, to that point, if I may, um, does that mean that that um, they should go back and get that done? No, according to town council, this is considered an accessory use to their existing allowed use under that zoning exemption from DPU. Okay. Thank you. Is it fair? Yes. Plenty of me. Um, question. And it's a side question that affects our town. Um, major boards are kind of aligned on this. Um, does anything that you're doing here affect your ability to become uh, a replacement for the gatehouse that they're trying to put? Eversource is trying to put onto Elm Street. Is this going to inhibit anything to do with that, or is it, um, 
or is it relatively just straightforward? Th th this has absolutely nothing to do with that project, uh, nor does it have anything to do with any of the other Eversource projects taking place um, in town or at the facility, because as I think you're all aware, we have worked on the other side of the road, and this really is not uh, by any means to support that project. This, this is really very much standalone for the facility itself, the existing facility itself. So to, to clarify further, if the gatehouse were to be located on the campus that you were talking about, uh, this project wouldn't interfere with it? Not at all. No, we, we own uh, mm -hmm. quite a bit of property in that area mm -hmm. um, that's unused, and this, this would not be a, a way of maybe blocking the movement of another project into that area. And the last, the last follow-up, um, may not have the science or but just the ballpark is it still possible to put the gatehouse on the campus on off of uh, Wilson Street um, I, from I would say I would say no but I'm not involved with that project from a spatial standpoint I would say that that's you know we again we have plenty of spatial room from a uh, piping physics standpoint I don't my personal belief is that would not work uh, but I'd have to leave that to that project group. As far as the space, this isn't going to from a spatial standpoint. Out. This this would ha affect that in no way. Thank you. I think this is my final question. <laughs> <laughs> Just a curiosity question: Is Air Products the company that manufactures the prefab building, or no, they're not. So, um, um, Hopkinton LNG Corporation owns the facility, which is an EverSource company. Air Products and Chemicals is a uh, a company which we contract to operate the facility and they've been operating the facility actually longer than ever sources own the facility so they've operated it for 47 years and we've owned it I think for 45 or 43 or something great thank you thank you any public comments I wonder if the fire chief has any comments at all or uh, perfectly, yeah. No. Okay. Walk through what we need for approval on this. <coughs> to is say there's a, oh, oh, I'm sorry, okay. I was asking me. No. Yeah, go oh. ahead. <laughs> I don't know if you're asking me. All you need to do is say yes. <laughs> Jennifer? Uh, it's the same as a, re it's a regular site plan. Um, you just need to um, find the standards, which if you look at my memo, I believe I, they either all comply or are not applicable. Um, so I've done that work for you. Um, as always, thank you. <laughs> you're welcome. <laughs> And then um, you just need to discuss um, any conditions, which I've laid out, I believe it's six mm -hmm. in the memo. Um, there are pretty standard conditions that we use in all um, site plans relative to these kinds of things. So um, I would just you know, review those, make sure the applicant is okay with those, and um, I think you'd be ready for a vote if the board finds the standards. Yeah, I'm going to walk through for the public the uh, conditions. The applicant <coughs> shall be responsible for mitigating all construction related impacts, including erosion, siltation, and dust control in a timely manner. The applicant shall regularly remove construction trash and debris from the site in accordance with good construction practice. No tree stumps, demolition material, trash, or debris shall be burned or buried on the site. Number three, mechanical equipment or other utility hardware on the roof, grounds, or buildings shall be screened from view from the ground. Number four, the director of municipal inspections inspects site plans under construction for compliance with the approved decision of site plan review. If the director of municipal inspections determines at any time before or during construction that a registered professional engineer or other such professional is required to assist with the inspections of the stormwater management system or any other component of the site plan, the applicant shall be responsible for the cost of those inspections. It means have your checkbook ready just in case. <laughs> uh, number five, in accordance with section 210 138 of the zoning bylaw, the applicant shall provide a performance guarantee 
in the amount of $3,000 to the town prior to the commencement of construction. Pursuant to this decision, the guarantee shall consist of a deposit of money or negotiable securities in a form selected by the planning board to guarantee that any unforeseen problems which arise, such as erosion and sedimentation and the correction of site lighting problems are addressed. The funds will be held by the town and returned to the applicant upon completion of the project. Number six, construction may occur only between the hours of 7 a.m. and 7 p.m. Monday through Friday and Saturdays between a.m. and 4 p.m. pursuant to Chapter 141, Article 1 of the Town of Hopkinton General Bylaws. Any well issues done. with those? Well done. Thank you. <laughs> All from memory. <laughs> <laughs> Any further discussions? I actually have a question, just for clarification. On the uh, application for the site plan review, it states, um, it says, will town water be provided? No. Will town sewer be provided? No. Um, this application is from May. I know they changed their plan to include the bathrooms and the eye water station. So is this application still accurate? Is this the most current application? So the town would be providing the water service to this. I, we would be using the existing water service. Does that, does that matter at all? I don't think it matters. I mean, I'm just, yeah. I just wanted to call it out. Good call. Mm -hmm. Originally, it, it didn't have any. Right. It had no plumbing for the uh, recommendation. I, I mean, I think the I application think was accurate when it was filed. Yeah. I think in the in the intern intermittent time or whatever the D, the board of health has requested a action that now requires that i think we wouldn't necessarily require them to update the application because when it was submitted it was accurate procedurally i just wanted to know mm -hmm. the clarification yeah. from any other discussion so just to clarify it they're already on town water and already on town sewer there is no sewer for the Right. So it's septic, is that? It's actually a uh, pump out. Um, so that's one of the items that we'll address with the Board of Health that we'll discuss. It's through the chair. Yep. Um, is is uh, sewer available? It, it is not on our location. Uh, I'd like to recommend then an, an extra condition that um, number seven uh, that our approval requires a uh, sign off from the Board of Health, which already does actually. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, it does. You can't get a building permit without oh. approval from the Board of Health. Yeah. So covered. Yeah, yeah. This is just a gateway to the <laughs> building permit. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Covered. Yeah. We, a design yeah. we have a motion. Nope. Oh. Nope. Well, we need a motion to approve it. Yeah, a motion that meets all. There's three. Three actions the right way. Right. So three actions required. Can we combine them? Can. So a combined vote determined that the project meets the requirements of a minor project under section 210-134, and to determine that the plan complies with the site plan standards and to approve the site plan with the conditions so noted. So moved. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Who abstained? Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> so carried. No, Thank you. All three. No, I needed to write it down. <laughs> 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 Thank you. Okay. Thank, Thank you. Thank you very much. Good luck, guys. I just saw the corner of my eyes. Somebody raised their hand. Would you like a parting gift? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Free gift or purchase? What were you thinking, like maybe five thousand hours of free electricity? <laughs> no, you uh, uh, <laughs> you know, uh, uh, I'll make a motion to close the hearing. Yes. yes. A second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain. So carry. Uh, let's move to Fox Mill Road. Excuse me. Fox Mill Road. Yes, that's what I was. Doing. <coughs> Establish the bond amount, Fox Mill Road, and we have the applicant here who has been. Patiently waiting. Patiently waiting. It was interesting. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, Ms. Barbieri has had submitted um, his cost estimates to complete the road. We had um, 
Bias Associates, the inspector reviewed that, and they came back with a different amount um, of $97,560. Um, then the board typically adds um, an additional line item for legal costs um, if we would have to take the bond for any reason. And that's in the past been about $5,000 the board has added. So with that, it would come to $102,560 if the board so chooses. Any issues from the? Excuse me. Any issues? No, not with that. Okay. Any other issues that you want to bring up? <laughs> I was going to say, there's nothing else on the agenda. So. I have a lot of issues. <laughs> Any discussion? Um, this is pretty standard calculation, Jennifer, to determine mm -hmm. the, the, the bond. Yeah. I, I, and then just as a sort of a, an FYI, so as you recall, this was done as an ANR plan with subdivision for construction of the road. So lot releases will not be required. Um, once he establishes this bond, he's then free to get his building permits for the whole slots. For information to the chair, how many homes are included on this? Three. Three. And uh, when will construction start? As soon as I get a lot revalued, as soon as I post the bond, you can build and have all the super permit wells are in and ready to go. And where we left off, uh, I know it was a few months ago, uh, the sewer is, is run down the street and okay, ready to go. And yeah, the sewer's all stubbed off to the lots. Okay. So I'll set to go. And two of the lots, the wells are already installed. W weren't there improvements that had to be made at some point um, by the town? Yeah, well, we were trying to run a bigger water main down, but it didn't happen. They just replaced the old two inch with another two inch, I believe. So it wasn't adequate to. Yeah, they never, they didn't get through. Disappointing. Mm -hmm. Yep, yeah. disappointing. So, Jennifer, through you, Mr. Chair. Yes. From my education, how was this able to be an ANR with a new road being built? The road already existed, I believe. It, I wasn't clear when this was approved, but from my understanding, it was, I believe, a paper street. It's a paper road. That they had, the lots had frontage already existing on the paper road, but okay. in order for him to improve it, in order to put the houses there, the board established it, the construction of the road through the subdivision process. Okay, thank you. Which requires the bond. Right. Okay. We'll get a motion. Motion to. Um, Steps. Yes. To say it again. A motion to establish the bond. Thank so you. Thank you. <laughs> As so noted. The amount of uh, was one hundred two five sixty. Do we have a second? Second. Thanks for taking. Any discussion? <laughs> All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain. So carried. Okay. Then if you have a couple of minutes, can I ask you a couple of questions? <laughs> uh, while I'm on the agenda, I need it's, to be it will take five minutes. The problem is if it's not published on an agenda, the public doesn't know that it. Right. Well, I'm, I'm not asking for a vote or anything. I just want to tell you what's going on there. Step to the chair. Is that possible? Mm -hmm. well, I'm uncomfortable about it. Why don't you review with uh, any follow-up review with Jennifer? I don't want to bring anything new up that wasn't published. Because we really can't give you any input on it. To so be simple, with but it. okay. That's fine. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Next item, uh, Saddle Hill Road, scenic road violation discussion. Jennifer. Um, before you do, Jen, mm -hmm. um, I have there there are butters in, in my property behind me. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I need to yeah, step I away. Yeah, I think it would probably be wise for you to recuse yourself. Okay, excuse me, gentlemen. Mm -hmm. So um, <clears throat> last week, I guess no, two weeks ago now. Yeah, two weeks ago or a week and a half ago. I received a phone call or an email. Well, actually, I first received a phone <coughs> call from the Board of Health agent, Brian Besso. And he had been by there and that they had um, removed a portion of the stone wall to access their property to 
cut down some trees and do some other site work. Wait, so look, I don't mean to uh, cut you off, Brian Bessel cut down some trees? No, that's not what I said. <laughs> I said he contacted me and said that he witnessed them, that they had removed the stone wall so that they could cut down some trees and do some site work. They being who? I'm just, I'm the developer. All right. The people in front of us. So I um, then also received a, I um, believe it was email from Mr. Durso uh, with the same information on that same day. I contacted um, Victor Galvani, one of the, the developers, and uh, ask him to cease and desist all work until I could get out there and assess the situation. He met me out there Friday, that, that was a Thursday, so Friday morning we met there at 7.30 in the morning and um, looked at the site, measured the, the wall that had been removed and walked up and down the area and talked a little bit and made some decisions about how to proceed um, and said that he needed to attend this meeting to address the issue with the board and so that the board could levy a fine under the um, scenic road law, mass general law, the board can levy, levy a fine of up to $300 per linear foot of roadway of wall that is disturbed. There was 23 feet of wall disturbed in that initial measurement. So that would be $6,900. Um, I also, we walked down a little bit, I think it's south, or south, south. south. Um, and there was an area um, between a telephone pole and a for sale sign that was there that's no longer there um, that had no, to my knowledge, and I have some pictures, because we, we looked pretty closely, no wall area. Um, it was pretty just much low ground cover, some poison ivy, some just basic like vegetation that they asked if they could access it through there, could they continue the work? And because it didn't involve any scenic road activity, I authorized, once they put the wall back and did that restitution, I authorized if they accessed it through the other side, they could continue the work. <clears throat> then we had the weekend, and then on Monday, I received another phone call from Mr. Durso, who expressed concerns that there was some additional um, scenic road violations happening. So I went out there again. Mr. Durso was already on site. Um, and I'm gonna stop there for now because there was a little bit of disagreement as to what was done later on, if anything. So we can get into that conversation. A little later. bit of a, a background is I had walked along I haven't been on the site in probably a year but I did walk the site on the front because when it was first put on the market looked at it as a potential parcel for open space so what I want to address I think we address here is the 23 feet mm -hmm. and then and that was a clear violation that's clear violation and, that. and then maybe arrange a walk through with with Mr. Durso Frank or and anybody else who's interested, just to just to make sure that there aren't any other, you know, violations that have taken place. So we will plan that. We'll just maybe have a discussion after this and see if other members want to take a walk. But kind of split it into two discussions so we can address this and move on. As far as this is concerned and then walk through and see if there were any other issues. Jail time, we're gonna discuss jail time or no? Yeah. <laughs> um, For the record, yes, I'm contending that there are two areas that were violated um, and the third that is open to some discussion um, and reflecting the calls I've received uh, in the neighbors I dropped by, texted, and um, one who's contacted Jennifer. Um, they and I do not understand how you, 
um, this work can start, it's an ANR, but where we left off was that it, you had pulled back your proposal and no neighbors or anyone was notified, no one at the town was notified uh, that any work was going to be done, and then the scenic road violations started. So uh, people are concerned about uh, conservation, there's no filtration, there's no um, protection for the wetlands in the upper eastern corner of the project, it's clear cut down to nubs. Um, there is uh, there are concerns that um, if it's an ANR, don't they have to come before us to ask for approval? And it's not required, but they at least have to ask. And that's the way I understand the process because the ANR map that we were shown from the previous discussions was pulled back, so there isn't any proposal in front of the town right now. Uh, there are concerns if, if you were, had a bunch of lumberjacks you headed into the woods and you can clear the trees that are not in the wetlands, sure. Uh, but large trucks were used, there's damage to the street, we haven't gotten feedback from the DPW yet. Um, and the neighbors are concerned that if all this could happen without uh, anyone saying anything, then what can happen after you get approval? So, um, Jennifer, why don't you just touch on how the ANR works in a residential? So an ANR plan is um, an approval not required under subdivision control law, which means that um, the lots that they would like to create already have frontage on an existing way of either public or private, in this case a public way, Saddle Hill Road. Um, and they do not need to construct a new road under subdivision control in order to get the lots approved. Um, that really has no bearing on whether or not they do work on their own property. That's within their legal rights to cut down trees as long as they're not in a wetland or in this case or within the right of way. And they don't need to subdivide their lots and create new lot lines in order to do that. So I think, the I think they're is, two completely separate issues. The question is once the scenic road violation had occurred because there was no other way to get a, uh, large vehicles in there, then why was the work allowed to still continue? And uh, from my understanding is because there was a temporary access, but there was no legal authority uh, by this board or anyone representing this board to grant that. So uh, in effect, the, to this day, for the past eight days, the property has been in violation of the scenic road law. And that's upsetting. Well, I think that we might be talking about apples and oranges to, to, to some extent, because if we don't, if we're talking about a correction of the violation, the scenic road, and this section of uh, wall that was taken down that's one aspect of it if there is another section that um, well, let me clarify my, my question no, let um, me finish okay. that has access then they don't have to come to us for that right. approval. but there is no a way for those machines to access the property other than violating the scenic road law once the scenic road law is violated why wasn't the work stopped altogether that's a question I don't have an answer for. Well, it was stopped. <coughs> well, excuse me. Were the machines removed from the property? No. And when, when I left the property on Monday, uh, I was told that the large tractor trailer would be removed, and instead it's been in and out all week. And uh, it, tell me if I'm wrong, but that's, that, seemed, that was what, what the uh, situation was when I left. Okay, let's turn it over to the applicant and talk about the um, situation. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'd like to introduce myself. My name is John Parsons. I'm the president of Parsons Commercial Group. To my right is Victor Galvani, who is uh, my partner in this development. Victor also is a Hopkinton resident. To my left is Dave Anderson. He's our project manager. And Dave has worked in Hopkinton for upwards of 10 years on other residential projects. Um, I respectfully disagree. I think there is the ability to access the site 
without breaking, uh, you know, the scenic uh, bylaws from the standpoint there, there was an area located on the street that permitted access because there was no stone wall there. And uh, Victor, maybe you could chime in on that as far as? Well, we located an area that we thought was permissible. Um, you know, I obviously met Jennifer down at the site and we tried to identify an area that's probably some other areas further down um, as you head northerly. Um, and, you know, from a practical standpoint, we thought, you know, when some of this equipment was being offloaded, doing it on um, Palomino was the, the easiest, you know, way. Less intrusive traffic wise. Right, that's correct. Um, to get in and out of that thing as quick as possible, not have to deal with anything. And, um, no, I, I take some of the blame in this because we were, I was under the assumption that as long as we had, in good faith, kept all the stones, kept everything together, and had the intention of reusing those stones to rebuild the wall and or put it back if need be. Uh, with Can I the stop intent you there? I'm sorry. The I don't make sure that Kobe gets this. You've worked in Hopkinton how many years, and you're not aware of the scenic So I law? would really, well, really I've never like done it. to listen to what they uh, have to say without interrupting them. Uh, I'm just amazed. I'm sorry. I've done a lot of work in Hopkinton, and now I haven't sat in front of a planning board ever. I, I admit that, and I, I'm, I'm, I'm a little um, you know, in, experienced in the whole total process, but I thought I had talked to the right people and asked the right questions, and apparently I was wrong. Um, so I approved moving the wall because I was thinking we were putting it back. We did it with good intention. We weren't trying to go around anybody. We were just, I thought we were in the right. You know, the guys were coming, so I just said, okay, let's just try to do this the right way. We moved all the rocks, which I thought was what was allowed to do because I was under the assumption we were allowed access to our property. Not knowing how strict this town, I mean, this uh, scenic road thing was, I uh, take responsibility in allowing this to happen. But as soon as the violation was brought to my attention, I stopped them, got the phone call. We met her in the morning. That uh, Before noon the next day, that wall was back in place where it was. And we had agreed on a spot down the street where there was no stone wall. Like she said, it was just brush. The trucks could kind of come in and back in at an angle. It was, it was a little intrusive on the traffic, the local traffic. Some people did get a little upset. You know, the machines were already in there. People, I don't know what else to say. Like, we well, tried to do everything we could the right way. I don't, I don't know. What through, through you, Mr. Chair, can I just? Well, let's Okay, I just wanted to ask a question for that. Let's them finish and then we'll go around with okay. questions. <clears throat> right, so initially in order to prove, I guess, the viability of the lots, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, we needed to do the deep um, test deep pits. Um, so you had met Brian um, Besso out there to review that. And when we were initially buying the land, we had an excavator go in and out to test, do some uh, soil testing. And then when they did the deep testing, Again, Brian was there, and we had a lot of access in and out um, across, you know, from Palomino over to the left of where the breach that we're talking about is, um, you know, is currently. And you know, when when the tree folks came to, you know, to do the clearing, I was under the impression they were going to use the the same area where the excavator had come in and out. We hadn't had an issue, um, you know, with it. To, to that point, um, you know, when Jennifer called me, um, you know, I was a little confused at first. I was like, well, you know, geez, these guys have been going in and out. We haven't had an issue. I'm sure because they're clearing trees, it's creating a disturbance, but I'll come down. You know, when I came down, admittedly, and I told her it was, you know, it was embarrassing. I was pretty disappointed. You know, it was a lack of oversight on our part, and it should have been more clearly defined where they should have accessed. So, you know, I'm not arguing, you know, the fact that that, that piece of it, you know, happened. There's, there's no question about it. Jennifer then went ahead and said, you know, listen, you guys want to measure this. Um, you know, this is the protocol. You're going to have to come in front. And we said, well, you know, can we continue? We found a place to access the land and kind of went, went from there. Also, for the record, I mean, we truly value that scenic road. I mean, the tree canopy, the stone walls, that's what we're selling. I mean, that's why people love Hopkinton. So that, that, that was never our intent. You know, it was never our intent to remove that wall. I mean, I think that that creates a tremendous amount of value and adds to the character of the street. So, again, it was lack of oversight, and at the end of the day, 
There's the buck stops here. We, we take full responsibility for it. Through the chair. Well, why don't I, let's open it up to the rest of the members and then you know come back. So why don't I go in? Um, can I just <coughs> ask? Um, is there any other violation except the stone wall or any of the trees in contention? Well, let me explain I'm to sorry. the chair. I'm sorry. I don't because. The chair and I and Jennifer are aware of the messaging the rest of the board hasn't because of open quorum. So if I could present the situation well, as I, far I'm, as what I'm trying to do now is to discuss this twenty three and then sure. move to the, yeah, the open issue. We'll so be that's yeah. to, to answer yeah. your question <clears throat> from my viewpoint and my inspection, there were no trees in the right of way removed. Um, uh, uh, I'll come back to you, Frank. Just, so, just um, so the the plan was to just do test pits, but <coughs> every tree had to come down for that. Uh, no, that was this. That was an after the fact. Um, the the tree piece of it was after the fact. We did um, call the. We talked to Chuck Cadwick. Um, inspector. Yeah. yeah, about if we could do work back there and. He said, you know, if you're not in violation, if you're staying out of the wetlands areas, what have you, you can't. Um, putting in the wells required the tree clearing, which also is part of sort of proving the viability of the buildable lot at the end of the day. Okay. Um, uh, I drove by it today. Is the wall back in like condition that it was in? Um, I wasn't there before it came down, so it's hard for me to say that they, <coughs> that they use the same stones. Um, I have a picture. I mean, so the only difference is there's, there's dirt on the stones. Right. Well, there's no green on the stones either. Yeah. So no, I did those. drive by it. It doesn't. Uh, don't. I don't want. This is before. This is no. This is now. <coughs> you did now. Right. Yeah. So like the only difference is it just isn't. I can't like. I could have spray painted them green. But I think mm -hmm. that would have been a little. Mm -hmm. Prior to. That's a run. Oh yes. I'm sorry. <coughs> So prior, prior to us starting the tree clearing, when I was alerted that they were going to come on, I think it was Tuesday, the Monday prior, we walked every linear foot um, to make sure that there weren't any trees. You know, the big thing was, you know, I knew, I knew the trees were going to be a huge part of it, so we tried to make sure that there wasn't anything that um, was going to be of an issue. And then from the wall back, we striped off a no cut so they wouldn't even approach the wall. Like we didn't want them getting anywhere near it. So, you know, again, not to displace blame, but I was disappointed when the contractor opened up a pretty large wall. I and mean, at the end of the day, it's, it's our oversight. So there's no, you know, there's no question about that. And then the second part of what was cleared, we went from the edge of. We went from 10 feet inside. Or outside the 100 foot buffer, and that's where our right. So, from the 100 foot, we went another, another 10, 10 or 20 feet. feet off of that and marked that off. So, there would that's be no you, so you wouldn't be able to get too too close to either um, so I'm, issue I'm to try to prevent it. Oh, so, sure. so, this right here is really our only wetlands that gets close. This is this dotted line is our 100 foot buffer. Yep, so this is the only spot that's even close. So, like, I kind of went from this spot, came in another 10 feet, which there's this path in the woods that was very easy to kind of find. And then we just went straight across here. So, we are every lot gets 200, 300, 400 feet away from any wetlands possible, and we're, and we're well 10 feet at least inside the 100 foot buffer okay. right there. Just pass it through the chair. May I ask a question about this photo? Um, does anybody have a photo of the area? Prior to the um, the taking down of the of the, because like Muriel, obviously I am concerned exact. about trees and the canopy as well. Um, whether or not that was it's disturbed, it's hot because this is this is more looking that way, and of course I'm not So a suggestion, I, I which yeah. may because we're already at 9:54, is. This area? If you take a look at Google Earth okay. Street View, yeah. you can see the stone wall. You can see. So it may pay. I hate to bring you back, and we'll try to put you early, but at 9.54, we're getting close to the time. It may be better to dress everything at one time 
and we can go back uh, maybe look at the site we'll set up a, a walk look I suggest you look at Google I haven't looked at it but I just checked to see if it was there you can look at the, the street view so this was uh, and something I didn't realize with, with Google you can actually go back in history if they had looked at yeah. it mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. at can, different yeah. points so uh, we can actually look at it and then come back and, and maybe discuss it in a more informed I think that's manner. a great idea. I, I'd like to, I would love to know what this, mm -hmm. this spot looked like prior to okay. this. Well, I appreciate your suggestion. Um, I think there's an open question as to whether a work can continue yes. while this is, while we're still thinking about it and going and, and looking at this. Um, and from my perspective, I think there's an open violation. I think that nothing should happen until we've actually had a chance to look at this. There's a regulatory framework. There's uh, you know, a scheme, a process that's supposed to be followed. And, um, and, and I think that the appropriate parties should, should have a chance to look at this before anything else happens. I agree. I, I just, just throw that out there. Mm -hmm. Again, you know, I would feel that Jennifer is the appropriate party, and while she, you know she did go on site and take a look at it, I'm not saying that now that we're made aware of the situation that maybe we shouldn't discuss it further. But I would like to say that I think Jennifer made the the appropriate call at the time based on her experience and her position in the town. So I'm, I'm not really sure we should question Jennifer's decision at that moment. Um, however, I'm not, <coughs> you know, I'm not opposed to discussing whether or not they should, they should continue work at this point. So, question of clarity: If they didn't violate the stone wall and they had a decent access to a different way, is everything else by 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 law done correctly? Or in in my opinion, yes. Okay, so I don't think yeah. one thing uh, yeah. before the ten o'clock hour. I know there's a couple, at least one member of the public. I'd like, I'd like that individual potentially to be heard because he might not be. Well, I so. just have a question. Josh, you have to come up to the mic. The <clears throat> and identify yourself with your address. Uh, Josh Dysonroth, Saddle Hill Road. So I live on the street, and like when I look at the property, I think there's definitely three violations. So there was a breach at Palomino where all the huge heavy equipment came on. And then over the next week and a half, there's been a huge 18-wheeler a little bit down the road in a different spot which had another breach and they chip all the trees into it and it pulls out and they'll move the rock wall back and then they take it back when the truck comes back and it will sit there at night the next morning they chip all the trees into it and it leaves so that's a breach that's happened numerous times and then the third spot is where they got new permission to go onto the property and if you look close enough there's definitely rocks in there some of them have sunken down but and you can look i took a picture on my phone there's, the rocks are moved next to the tree where they have where they were granted access. So I mean, there wouldn't be a pile of rocks there if there was no rocks there to begin with. I just wanted. Yeah, I think um, I'm sorry. I just think you're confused on where we're allowed to the 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 So oh, if sorry. if you go if you go in the three sections south, the first section was where all the heavy equipment went in. The next section is where the semi goes, and then the very last section, the furthest south towards 135, is where you're granted access. And I just want to say the, the, the part where they're granted access, where those rocks were placed, were placed there because a planning board member asked them to be placed there. All right, here, here's the is deal. Is that not true? It is not true. I said we did not have any authority to approve anything concerning the rock wall, and I was under the impression when we left there that the truck that Josh is talking about would be removed and not go back in there. So if that meant that the big trucks would still stay in there, I don't know. But I don't see how they can violate scenic road law three separate places and still be allowed to to do whatever they want because without answering for what they've done wrong now they are remitting for the 23 feet which is the central section the initial section I have photographs on that Thursday of the 18th of the tire tracks going over the wall um, that's where they left it no other part was just was disturbed on Thursday on Friday this 23 feet was disturbed after we were notified, after I notified Jennifer later in the day, um, if I did it sooner, then maybe she could have got there Thursday. Sorry, my bad. But on Friday morning, she met with them, and 
approve the most southern section. The most southern section, uh, I believe you made a mistake, and we talked about it then. There were stones there, the walls blasted back when they made an entrance there. Uh, I was not happy with it, uh, but since she had already, we don't have the authority as individuals or as an employer of the town to say, oh yes, you can do this. The board has that authority. And um, I was told the truck would be removed and then we'll talk about this on Monday, we're here. But uh, work continued and uh, I would like to work stop until we get to the bottom of this uh, or we calculate the fine now. Uh, we just don't have the information on all the trees as yet. And uh, the dates that this happened were Thursday the 18th, Friday the 19th, Monday the 21st. Now, mm -hmm. um, it's the 28th and... Uh, Through you, Mr. Chair. I've been waiting patiently to ask a question for like 20 minutes, so I'd like to ask it before these guys disperse so I'd have time to think about it while, um, in between. So what was your, what's your plan for going forward? Like, were you going to come back to us for breaks in the stone walls to put the individual houses? That's, that's correct. So how many breaks in the wall do you think you would need? Eleven. Eleven. Okay. They're scheduled to come before you already, actually. Right? So just a follow-up then. That's, that's not my burning question, but um, I don't see any reason to stop their work if they're doing everything according to our but planner. They're, they're but, not. According to our planner, they did everything that they're supposed to be doing. Yes, they have a violation, and that's a whole separate discussion, how we want to punish them, and I don't think we need to decide that tonight, right? Well, if, if I can point out through the chair, she said they're on, they're on a schedule for the 11th. If they're on a schedule for the 11th, is that the day they're going to ask for uh, scenic roadway approvals? For four of the lots, yes. So you knew you had to do that, and when you scheduled that sometime in the past, Certainly yeah, before. Last week. We just last week. We oh, okay. The, we have the engineering. Then never mind. mind. So, sorry. any other, Amy? Well, I just had a question. Do we have the authority to stop the work until the next meeting when we're going to review it in more detail? What are we asking? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> um, if they are continuously violating, your, in your opinion, then I believe you do have that authority. I, feel, I guess I feel unclear whether it's. There's a, so everybody agrees there was the one violation and it seems a little unclear about if there were others. I, I would agree that it seems clear about the one, but whether or not they're continuing to violate, I'm, I, I'm, not, I'm not clear or, or feel confident to make so, so I don't know what to do. I can show you guys a video of the location um, of the violation with the truck. So I would like us to be able to do the sidewalk as suggested. You, there's no legal way that she or I, I could approve anything. Don't engage. <clears throat> I think that, so there is a question. If aerial. there was a stone wall, it was there was more. Um, there is. I, I find it fairly compelling um, that a resident has watched them move the stones to take the trucks in and out and put them back. Um, that seems intentional, and I understand that it's an open conversation, but I think we have to know more about that, and there's at least... Um, there's at least the plausible suggestion that there's intentionality in violating the bylaw and re-violating it. Um, and that gets my attention a lot. Mm -hmm. I kind of only got 30 seconds, okay. but go ahead, Frank. You haven't spoken. Is much. that the case? Th that is not the case yeah, as far as I'm concerned. Dave, you're on the I, site. I was on vacation last week, so if they were doing that, it wasn't under my awareness, and it no. was not under our approval. Um, w the area that this was a you know proof to go and the, the way that these guys you know enter the site in order to get that tractor trailer in and out i mean ultimately they lay a layer of bark mulch prior to that you know when they gain access the, the first step is you know putting the blade of a bulldozer down and you know going in and that you know they they build a small road for themselves on the access into the site i mean they're turning up you know one rock after the next and and, and they're coming up from <coughs> You know, every which way on the way on the site. Um, you know, we sort of, you know, again, when I met Jennifer down there, you know, we had the tree guys there, our, um, our group, and we 
pushed the vegetation around, you know, looked for a wall. I mean, we, were, you know, we spent a good amount of time down at the site to determine an area that you know, we thought was going to be deemed as, you know, to gain access to our land. So we tried to, you know, find that area, came to an agreement, you know, they went in and, and, and pushed in right, you know, where this predetermined area was. So um, they're not necessarily. It's, it's at an extreme, on top of that, it's at, it's at a very extreme angle. So because to get that, you know, that trailer in, and, and obviously South Hill's very, very tight, um, I believe they, between the way, the way the trees are and what have you, I mean, it's, a, it's, it's narrow where they're, where they're bringing that, um, that, but that's fine. I mean, they're, they're using it and, it, you know, it is what it is, meaning, you know, it's, it's an inconvenience. They but weren't that, supposed to be using it other than to move that truck out on end of Monday. Well, through the chair, w w where was that stated? Where was that stated? That yes. was told to me by your, your workers. So they said you guys told them to do this that Jennifer gave them permission to go down the south side. There was a horse trail opening, six to 12 feet wide, neighbors aren't sure exactly what it was, included within that 20 feet. There's a stone wall there, it's still under, the stones, the rocks are still there. I have photos of it, I have photos of the northernmost section showing the, the two tire tracks of the trailer, the tractor that went in. Uh, the next day, that was all smoothed over, can, even after you were told to stop. Uh, and that's 14.9 feet we measured. The 23 feet that you are emitting uh, is the central section. And the southern section that uh, it's a stone wall. Jennifer didn't know about it. It's there. And we knew about it Monday. We cannot approve uh, any change in the, scenic, in the scenic roadway as individuals, myself or Jennifer. We were told that the truck would be removed, the tractor trailer truck. And that would be the last thing coming out. Okay, so I'm going to go on the record and say I was never told that the tractor truck. Okay. Could, uh, I'm going to step back because we've got a we've got a factual <laughs> issue. I have photos and, and I have a video. Okay, can I just get my look, second thirty second question no, in? No, because I'm going to we're going to continue oh. this uh, kind of the next discussion when we can all be on the same plane. So I'm looking for. A I'm making a motion that we ask them to stop all work on this project until we can determine what the damage is. And so I can we, factually, I can show you photographs. I can factually prove everything I'm saying. So let's just take, so you're making a motion to ask them to, or are you making a motion to stop? Demand to stop because of the violations to the scenic road okay. by law. I'll Ooh. second that. I think there's enough questions we need to know more. Okay, any discussion? Yes, please. Question for you guys. You knew you were going to need 11 breaks in the stone wall. That's correct. Why didn't you come to the board first before you started digging for wells, parking for wells? I think the engineering what, wasn't complete, is that? I mean, why, what makes you think, why would you take down all these trees and stuff and propose lots if you weren't even sure that you could build on those lots? But we knew we could build on them. I mean, we had to go and do testing to... How can, how can you build on them without any access to the road? Well, we had access to test the uh, septic and deep hole tests, is that correct? No, I mean your future plan of where the homes are going to be situated, where the driveway is going to come out. Well, that was based on where the septic systems and the wells are ultimately going to be located. So that was an engineering piece. It, it just seems like a wrong way, in my opinion, to go about planning. I mean, why did you guys not go with the, approved, the, the subdivision that you guys promoted? Why, why did you pull that back? I think the timing involved and the, the market conditions right now warranted uh, and our lots versus the time it would take to get a fully permitted, you know, 19 or 18 lot subdivision. And it was very expensive. The, the open uh, space plan just didn't seem to work with what we had in mind. I mean, just real quickly, from what I'm hearing, this sounded like it was pretty reckless. So you guys admit it, but to me, it seems like it's still going to be reckless going forward. Like, you don't really have a plan for, you know, coming back to us with. Oh, no, we, we do have a plan. We have a plan. Uh, yeah. Right. Uh, but September but cl clear cutting the lot beforehand, I mean. Well, you have to do that to dig a well. And you can't get a building permit without a well saying that you had to buy the water. So we thought we were allowed to get into the thing to clear the trees so we could get the well dug so then we can apply for the permit while we we're in the process of getting approvals for the, for the driveways. Okay. 
we, we, we did not do anything ill intent. We're not trying to yeah. hide anything. I just want to put that out there that I'm, I'm not trying to get anybody mad at us. I want to do everything right. I was just wrong in the way I approached it, and I apologize. And I will do whatever you need me to do to fix it all, I promise. One, one suggestion I would have, and this may be a reasonable suggestion, is that there are no trucks can access the site in and out. But if, if we're allowed to continue cutting trees, and we just can't remove them from the site. I mean, to me, the issue isn't not whether or not we're allowed to cut trees down. The issue is access to the site. So my suggestion is you, trucks may not access the site, but folks may be allowed to continue the tree removal. To me, that seems like a reasonable approach. I think they're done anyway. If I may, the point well, let's, is. We have, we have a motion, motion that was seconded. A motion. I, I have not retracted my second. Okay. Any further discussion? All set, thank you. All in favor of the motion? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain. You're waiting until the 11th. Sorry, what was it? Sounds good. Thank you. Thank you. Just to be clear, what was the motion? It was to stop, stop working. Stop until working. We get stop to working. See. Okay. So get thank you. I'll just abstain if you say it. Well, you get tough for Kobe. Did you crave saying it? She has to write it down. <laughs> Any other items? Yeah, because there was silence. Oh, was, yeah. there was. Okay. David. Who was the yes? Everybody vote in favor of that motion. Except Who was the yes? For one. Brand, David. I'll be yes. yes. You all voted in yes. favor? Yes. yes. Okay. It, it took about 12 except, minutes. But except for Cliff and me. Which I Cliff abstained. Cliff didn't get it. You just wanted to make sure he got it. I don't know how she could have not gotten it because I didn't get it myself either. So Just a lot going on. Adjourn. Motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Oh wait, wait. Did we set a site walk date? Oh. Yeah. Yeah. We're gonna go look at it, or what are we doing? You can. Um, Did you have that out there, Cliff? Is there a way <laughs> to <laughs> distribute <laughs> your? Is there a way to distribute <laughs> if Frank submits the video yeah. to you? Yeah. I, I would just, I would be more comfortable. I would really be more comfortable if we had a site walk scheduled and those of us who are available can yeah. go. Because so we're all looking at the same thing. And then let's look at this weekend is probably yeah. Labor Day. Labor Day. Labor Day. It is Labor Day weekend. So uh, the weekend before the meeting, the ninth at nine o'clock. Can I can I ask? The site I may not be able to make it. The site walk for the, yeah. uh, for the for the for to look at the Saddle Hill. Yeah. Saddle Hill, right? You're looking to to go and take a look at it and see what it looks like. Um, are you still talking about using Google? Um, yeah, I, I think if that people want to have a, I think it's definitely because Google will tell you what what was definitely there beforehand. Yeah, I'm curious Sorry, about which, the vegetation prior. Saturday? I just want to see what it looked like. Which yeah. Saturday at nine o'clock? The eleventh. No. Ninth. The ninth. The ninth. Okay. Saturday the ninth at nine. We're, we're still on camera. I just want to make that yeah. clear to everybody so that we know what we're doing here. Well, <laughs> I, for the record, I may not be able to make it on the ninth. Yeah. So I, I will. Is there uh, another date that you want to propose? I well, I would be I would be able to do it this weekend on Saturday, but I know that um, you know it's Labor Day weekend. So uh, I'm in town. I I'm, I'm around. around. Yeah. And, but I'm not. We could okay. do it. It's still late enough. We could I do it after work. I can drive by someday. and check it out myself. It doesn't have to be a weekend, right? Yeah. Right. I think that I think that the fifth that is, you know, the, I mean, this weekend is hard. Yeah. No, that's fine. I'm just I'll go on my own. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I mean, yeah. that's the important yeah. thing. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And and then if if others of us have photos, we could send them to Jennifer. Send it to to Jen okay. and. So what am I posting for a site visit? Uh, the 9th at 9. Can I, can I, the 9th at what time? 9 o'clock. Just make an observation. So I, I am a little curious, I guess, that if this is such a major violation, that only one resident came. I would have thought that. Me too. I would have thought more people would have been here. So just that's just an observation, uh, and maybe they, you know, I don't, I don't know. I thought there would have been more outcry, I suppose. So there that was. was just, I just thought that, yeah, I just, yeah. I just thought that was curious. There weren't there, that only one one person came. I got so much. I, I said please contact Jennifer, and only one person did. Yeah. And it's, you know, it's like some people don't even know though. It's like just because of 
That sucks. I mean, I don't know if that has any bearing on anything. It was just an observation. Yeah. If, I, if I may add to that yeah. point, then. Uh, have we, it's 10.15. Yeah. Have we ended want, the meeting? We have. Oh, OK. Yeah. yeah. I, Did we vote? Yeah. We didn't have oh, to vote. Yeah. We didn't vote. Motion, motion to adjourn. Uh, we have a vote. Let's oh, take the motion. Well, well may, I, may I add to her to that, then, uh, in closing, that, that a lot of people, residents, don't understand the scenic laws and bylaws of Scenic road bylaws. So I, I'm I'm assuming that a lot of people aren't um, privy to that that um, bylaw in itself, and there there are so a lot of people are just residents that go by there and and think that right, they that might, might be the normal. They might have thought it was permitted, yeah. right? Yeah. Right. So so that could be the the case, and I don't know. And they don't and they don't all read the paper. I, I have it right here. <laughs> it's we, we we called a lane that day, and Lance said, "Well, any trees behind the stone wall." Uh, are okay, but then this doesn't mention that here. It just mentions trees and walls. It doesn't mention where the trees are. So yeah, I, I mean for the layman, though. I'm, I'm saying for even the as a planning board member, I don't exactly know. Right. You know, and but it's only trees in town on property, right? In the right, right away. away. In, the in, right. in the right away. But Is that the same thing? Town on property and right away? No, not necessarily. Okay. But I think basically what Elaine was saying to us is that. The stone wall, maybe I don't want to put words into her mouth, but the stone wall makes the edge of the right away. But I don't know. That, I'm assuming. I think unless there's special I think it's legislation, they are the same thing on a normal street. Oh, right hi. The, the state is even. All in favor. We have a title. Aye. 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 Aye